That I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins for the inaugural WAC championship game. Wyoming against BYU. Wyoming won the toss and has elected to receive. That's Ethan Potchman, number 37, kicking off to Wyoming's Marcus Brigham and number two, Richard Peace. An alliance bull birth at stake for the Cougars. Also a lot at stake for the Cowboys. This is Brigham. Brigham with a nice return out near the 30-yard line. The starting quarterback for Wyoming is Josh Walworth. He's 6'3", 205-pound senior. He's the leader of the number one passing offense in the country. That's right. This is an extremely prolific, productive offense. And he has to throw the football with a lot of zip today, a lot of velocity on his football. That is what the coach says, one of the most important things in this pass offense today against the Cougars. Wyoming needs to win today. If they do win, they could go to either the Holiday Bowl or the Cotton Bowl, a loss they could be done for the season. Len Sexton is the lone back. That's Marcus Harris in motion. They give it to Sexton. Dancing up between the tackles, brought down to the 33-yard line. A look at the Chili's backs and receivers. Sexton, the running back. Marcus Harris, the record-setting receiver with three 1,400-yard receiving seasons. Amazing, John. Yeah, he really is, and he's playing in front of an offensive line today that blocks extremely well for the pass. Steve Cipher's there. This is his 47th consecutive start. He's only given up five sacks in his entire career. That allows Harris to get open. The line as a whole has only given up 21 on the season. Sexton, the lone back. Twins to the right. Little waggle action. Walworth on the move. You won't see him run off, and that time he elects to do just that. And he's brought down just shy of the 35-yard line by Ed Keel. A look at the front seven for BYU, the number one total defense and scoring defense in the conference. Shea Muirbrook is a very good play. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Pro scouts think he's a little bit too short. He plays real hard, and the reason this defense is number one is because those corners, Tim McTire right there and Omar Morgan, play very good man-to-man -man coverage. They allow the defense to do a lot more gambling. Yeah, you'll see them come up and press on those corners, on the receivers. Third down and four. They go empty, emptying out the backfield. Well work to pass. Incomplete on the middle uh, intended for Marcus Harris. He may have heard some footsteps. And that's that floater I was telling you about. He didn't set his feet and fire the football across the middle. And it's 1-2-3 punt for Wyoming on its first offensive possession. Aaron Langley into punt for the Cowpokes. 6-1, a 181-pound sophomore. There's a look at him. He's standing on his own 21. And number six, that guy... James Dye might be the premier punt returner in the country as four punt return touchdowns in his career. The question, John, is will they kick it to him? Well, Utah certainly did it in their last game. He hasn't fielded too many punts recently. He's going to get an opportunity at this one. Let's it bounce to the 32. Takes a Cougar bounce out to the 32-yard line. And that is where Steve Sarkeesian and the Cougars will take over after that 33-yard punt. Sarkeesian, number 12, 6'2", 210-pound senior, the number one man in the nation in passing efficiency. But just 7 of 12 a week ago, John. That's right. That's 70 yards there. That's the lowest output in over a decade for BYU. And the question today, Mark, is which team's going to show up, the one that averages 300 yards passing or the one that's averaged over 300 yards rushing in the last three games? BYU and rushing, kind of an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, sure is. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. Single back set, Sarkeesian to pass on first down. The flanker screen complete to Kaipo McGuire. McGuire out to the 38-yard line, brought down by Larson. Here's a look at the Cougars' Chili's backs and receivers. Brian McKenzie, number 20, last week, actually a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, running for 176 yards against Utah. And Ronnie Jenkins, the true freshman, will keep coming back in and play as well. Larry Moore was said to be too small by some other college recruiters. He comes here to BYU. He happens to be all-conference. There's a lot of pro scouts taking a hard look at that man. Second down and five for BYU on its opening series of the game. Here's McKenzie on the sweep. Couldn't get to the perimeter, and he's brought down 
at the 37-yard line by number 90, Jeff Leonard. A look at the front seven for the Cowpokes. One of those bend but don't break defenses, John. And Jim Talish right there has led the team in tackles the last three years. He's not very swift of foot, but he plays well in the running game. This is a defense that creates a lot of turnovers and sacks. And Brian Lee has created eight turnovers himself. He's second in the nation in interceptions behind Dre Bly of North Carolina. Wyoming led the conference in interceptions, by the way. Two tight end formation on third down and four for BYU. Mealy in motion. Sarkeesian looking for his big tight end, Atili Muli. And Atila Muli was covered nicely on the play, and BYU will have to punt. A look at the quarterback and the tight end talking things over. Yeah, look at the tight end there on the left side of Tula Mealy. You see him in motion there. Now he's going to come out and then come back in. It's a delay road route inside, but it's man-to-man -man coverage. He's got to run away from that coverage. He didn't. He settled as if it were zone. That's why Sarkeesian led him inside. Number eight is Alan Brodman. Four-year starter. And Marcus Harris is standing on his own 15-yard line for the Cowboys. A returnable punt at the nine-yard line. That's Harris. Harris tiptoes upfield and is knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line. A 53-yard punt, 16 on the return. We'll be back right after this. The sticks have a personality all their own, and Chili's fire roasted skewers set the tone. Watch them sizzle from fire and flame. Now beef and chicken ain't the same. Zucchini and squash hooked between peppers and corn. With chili pepper, honey, and lime seasonings, they're adorned. Then lusciously lanced, they're laid upon the flame to feel the fires dance. Mmm, fire roasted skewers, oh, you haven't had them yet? Well, chili's grills like no place else. On that, you can safely bet. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth. My two front teeth. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. My two front teeth. My two front teeth. All I want for wanna Christmas. Want to hear some really good Christmas songs? Buy Wrangler Apparel and get this free cowboy Christmas tape featuring George Strait, Vince Gill, Trisha Yearwood, and more. So I can wish you Merry Christmas. Chevy S10 Sports Side. The coolest thing to come on the back of a truck since the Nutty Buddy. Chevy S10 Sports Side. Like a rock. The high powered Florida Gators are ready. The Alabama Crimson Tide is too. They meet in prime time for the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper tonight on ABC. Simply put, it's a $6 million game for BYU. If they win, that's the difference between going to an Alliance Bowl or a lower-tiered bowl. If Wyoming wins, they go to either the Holiday or the Cotton Bowl. And there's a look at Lavelle Edwards, 25 years as head coach of BYU. First down and 10. Len Sexton emptying out the backfield. Wall work over the middle, picked off. Ellison with the pinch. And BYU has the first turnover of the ball game. Well, Marcus Harris was the intended receiver on that mark. He came across the middle. It's two passes over the middle, one resulting in an incompletion that floated a little bit earlier. And then this one was picked off off of Harris's hands. Harris will come from your left to right, number 23, coming across the middle. And with the pressure, the ball's a little bit behind Harris, but certainly a guy of his abilities and his hands should have easily caught that football. He's gained more yards than anybody else receiving in the history of the NCAA, but he can get one there. Coming back the other way now, BYU first and 10 from the 23. They hand it off. That's McKenzie running between the tackles, made it down to the 20-yard line. McKenzie, a 5'10", 205-pound junior. And there's a look at the head coach, Joe Tiller of Wyoming. It's been an extremely emotional couple of weeks for him and his staff. They are leaving after this game. 
departing for Purdue. Sixth season as head coach. Tiller, some people feel very much underappreciated in Wyoming. Second down and eight for BYU. Two tight end formation. Sarkeesian checking at the line, audibly. Yalalui open, catches it at the 15. Brought down about two yards shy of the first down at the 14-yard line by Wayman Levingston. Let's go downstairs to Dean. Guys, I was in the Wyoming locker room a moment ago as Joe Tiller had an enthusiastic speech, an emotional speech to his club. He said, guys, nothing has changed from the beginning of the season. He says, you schedule 13 games. This is number 12. He says, offensively, you've got to make plays. Someone's got to step up. Defensively, he says, I'm not as concerned about sacking Sarkeesian. He says, I want to get pressure on him every play. You know, Dean, I got a chance to listen to his talk to the team the other day at Laramie, and he said the close battles are won before they ever begin, and this team has been preparing for this one for a long time. Time for them to make a defensive statement on third down and two. Followed the 14, Sarkeesian hands it off. McKenzie don't think he got it. Stopped up by Brent Liu, number 89. Pat Larson also in the vicinity to make the tackle. Lou, 6'6", 272, a senior. Brent Lou did a great job of just cutting down from the outside. Watch here, he comes right down and slants down inside and gets inside that block of the tight end. That's not a good job by Chad Lewis, the tight end blocking there. He's got to seal Lou off, and it forces BYU into a kicking situation. Ethan Pochman into attempt a field goal from 30 yards out. He's 16 of 23 on the year. Make that 17 of 24. The Cougars strike first in the shadows of the Rockies. It's 3-0 when we come back. Stood there boldly, sweating in the sun. Felt like a million, felt like number one. Like Chevy has crossed the finish line first more than anybody in NASCAR truck racing. Like which makes packing up after a day's work a lot easier. Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. A lot of what I do goes on behind the scenes. You know, most people aren't exactly on a first-name basis with their State Farm Claim representative. They know their agent, but they probably don't know that their agent has a partner, that we're a team, that we've worked on hundreds of claims together. But people take notice when a claim is handled promptly, and you won't get too many complaints if you just treat them fair, because that's when people appreciate what we do and who they're insured with. Championship on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Wrangler, real, comfortable, jeans. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. And Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. Now let's look at the strip here, Las Vegas Boulevard, and look at a sold out Sanford Stadium. I'm Mark Jones, along with John Spagnola. A lot at stake, John, for the BYU Cougars, but their head coach, Lavelle Edwards, hasn't mentioned that four letter bowl word this week. Uh, that's true. You know, I'm not even sure if they're aware right now that Texas upset Nebraska today. I mean, these are, he's talked to his team, and he said, you know, I want you to win this game. You have to take care of the business at hand. Anything beyond that, it's great. But if they don't win the game here today, you know, now they fall out of the alliance into a lower echelon ball situation. Yeah, the hopes of an entire conference in part resting on BYU. Potchman's kick five yards deep in the end zone. Brigham takes a knee. Well, tomorrow on ABC Sports, 
a we do that hoop thing. We tip off another exciting college basketball season. Most of you will see undefeated Michigan take on Duke or in regional action, Maryland, California, Payne Weber College basketball beginning tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific right here on ABC Sports. You know, Mark, getting into Wyoming, you know, the Wyoming situation here, on the other hand, if they don't win a ball game, as you mentioned, they get shut out, and I don't think they take kindly. Everybody's talked about BYU and the Alliance, back and forth with all that, and everybody's overlooked the fact that Wyoming has to play a football game today and that they feel they can beat BYU. They question the strength of the schedule of the Cougars, and they feel like they've played a stronger schedule, and they deserve to be here, and they have some pretty serious designs themselves on today's game. Yeah, and speaking with the players and coaching staff, you could tell that... They came here with a purpose, no doubt, something to prove. A handoff to Sexton on first and ten. Sexton trying to make something out of nothing and drilled at the 21-yard line by number 21, Tim McTire. Look at the respective averages per game. Lots of offense from Wyoming. 5'11", tops in the WAC. That's right, 366 is tops in the country. BYU, as you said, number one defense. They're playing very well. Giving up only 312 yards a game and only 18 points. And Sexton really took a lick from McDyer. Well, that's what I talked about. McDyer, Omar Brown, the two cornerbacks are playing so well this year, they're adding a lot to the passing game and to the run support. They go with five wideouts. Wall work sliding, hook sliding into the 24-yard line. It'll be third down and about six to go. Shane Muirbrook, number 46, making the tackle. And I think right now the Cowboys have to settle down a little bit offensively. While we're through the interception, he's got to be a little bit pressing right now. But this team is, knows how to move the football. They've come from behind in seven other games this year to win. They know how to do things offensively, but they have to settle down right now, take a breath, and just get into a regular offensive pattern. That's what happened last year when they played against BYU. Joe Tiller told us that the team was a little too psyched up, a little too emotional. Third and six, wall work incomplete at the 43-yard line intended for his go-to guy Marcus Harris he was covered by Omar Morgan tightly wall work now 0 for 3 with an interception this is tight coverage almost too tight by Omar Brown a good release by Harris he's physical he thought he could be more physical on Brown today but that ball's thrown out over the outside shoulder and you have much of a chance on it Brown wins that battle as a result John Aaron Langley into punt and James Dye, number six, still waiting patiently, pours for an opportunity to return one. Maybe the most feared punt returner in the country, standing at the 32-yard line for the Cougars. A high spiraling punt. Dye takes it at the 43-yard line and flagged down where he caught it. A 34-yard punt and nothing on the return. James Dye rolling forward to about the 44. One thing about the WAC is they call numbers with penalties. So we can sound a lot smarter today, Mark. <laughs> Put the finger on the guy, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> this one is against Wyoming, much to the chagrin of Joe Tiller. Bill McCabe, the man wearing the white hat. Interference with the opportunity to make a kick catch. Number two on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's Richard Peace, the perpetrator on the infraction. He of the do-rag. And we're going to call a timeout. BYU with Luke. Yeah, BYU with the lead, 3-0. away. Has he done everything you've asked him to? 
everything he's been saying he'd do. Has he been a good boy this year? Well, maybe he deserves a shiny new toy this Christmas. And maybe we can help you find just the right one at the True Value Christmas is just around the corner sale. I was strong as I could be like a rock. Nothing ever got to me. Vortec, the most powerful line of engines ever in a Chevy truck. Like a rock. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Over 40,000 on hand here at a sold-out Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. BYU with the lead 3-0, first down and 10 from its own 49-yard line. Two tights, and Ronnie Jenkins now the featured back. Play fake. The waggle, Sarkeesian, complete to his tight end, Itula Mealy, oh, he a 6-4 senior. Mealy looks like uh, he got his right knee caught underneath on that tackle. And he's down on the ground. He's in pain. They can ill afford to lose him, John. He's all conference. Tied for second nationally among tight ends and receptions with 45 coming into the game. Yeah, watch Mealy. He's going to catch this short little pass from Sarkeesian. That's Brian Lee closing number 45 and closing right. Oh, that knee just Ooh. buckled in. And I hate to see that. That oh. does not look good. That hurts. And uh, Mealy's. The guy who the pros are looking very hard at. He's very athletic tight end. We had has a, had a fine season and career. We had a great way you. Yeah, we had a great visit with him yesterday and he's telling us how he hurt his right thumb. His left thumb scratch that. Toughing it out. But this one much more serious than a hand injury. Yeah, and you look at Brian Lee. I mean, he certainly didn't want to hurt anybody there. Here's a guy who's just closing on the tackle, and he's going to take a big guy, a physical guy like Atula Mealy. He's going to take him down low when he hits him. Mealy now limping off the field with some help. Oh, he's going to need some help. Yep. Important day for the Cougars. Writhing in pain is Mealy right there. John Moala, number 84, is his backup. We'll no doubt see some action. He's a 300-pound freshman. Second down. And six to go. Sarkeesian's going to pass. Underneath to Jenkins. And Jenkins is brought down at about the 48-yard line by Jim Talich, the team's top tackler, number 94. It'll be third down and about six to go. Jenkins, a speedy, shifty runner out of the backfield, a good receiver, too. A 5'11", 170-pound freshman. A little light at 170, but a tough runner. Defensively, a look at the Cowboys. Right? Yeah, Jim Talich, number 94. You see him closing on the tight end. He takes the tight end away from the pattern. That forces the pass underneath to Jenkins. He actually plays two receivers at once. The receivers for the Cougars have to have a little better spacing than that. Three receivers on third and nine. Sarkeesian steps up and runs it himself. Sarkeesian with the first down to the 31-yard line. Showing good escapability that time, picking up 20 yards before being tackled by Brian Brown, number 13 for the Cowboys. Well, Sarkeesian's a battler. He's a very good athlete. Part of the reason why a quarterback scrambles is he has very good coverage there on James Dye. Wayman Levingston, this is <laughs> this is this is coverage beyond the call of duty right there. Take him out of bounds, push him out, and keep him out of the pattern there. Tried to give Dye a free seat on the bench. It's the first first down by either team so far today. With 5.40 remaining in the quarter. Jenkins trying to get to the corner, and he's snuffed at the 33-yard line by a cabal of tacklers, including Talich. 
An important day for the Cougars and an equally important day for the Florida Gators. Don't forget, coming up next, you can see Danny Werfel and the Gators take on Alabama at the Georgia Dome. It's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. That's coming up next right here on ABC. Yeah, Florida's going for their fourth consecutive SEC title, and of course, looming even larger in the picture now is that Alliance Bowl bid, perhaps in the Sugar Bowl. A lot of, a lot of thinking could go on between mm. today and tomorrow, Mark. <laughs> You can bet they were motivated by that Nebraska loss. Second down and 13. Out of the backfield, Dustin Johnson, number 32, wrestled down to the 31-yard line. Johnson, the 6'2 junior, 235 pounds, brought down by Livingston and Talich. Let's go downstairs to Dean. Guys, as you were afraid, the information on Mealy is not good. Definitely out for the game. Looks to be a serious knee injury. He is absolutely devastated on the sideline in major pain. Teammates around him consoling him. But a very, very bad news for BYU. That sure is, Dean. Third down and 10. A pro career in the balance for Mealy. Sarkeesian to pass. Third and 10. Johnson out of the backfield. Helmet to helmet, and the battle won that time by Lee Vaughn, who brings down Johnson, short of the first down at the 27-yard line. And Lee Vaughn's given up 50 pounds in this matchup. Great coverage downfield against Sarkeesian, has a lot of time to throw, but he has to go off to his layoff receiver, Dustin Johnson. Lee Vaughn comes through, and he, he hits him about as well as he can. It wasn't exactly textbook form tackling, but he got the job done. Ethan Pochman now in to attempt a field goal from 43 yards out. He's already made one today. And Pochman nails it. Not well, short. Not short. Yeah. It fell short. Hit that ball a little bit low on the football. It had too much rotation. He had the aim, but not the leg. 3-0 when we come back. Wednesdays are changing, brilliant, they're rearranging, your favorite comedies on ABC. Right. Grace under fire, kicks off an age, wow, and now Coach is back right after that, Drew Carey, then Ellen. Hey, I'm in on that. Wednesdays are changing on ABC. Hilarious episodes of your favorite shows at brand new times and the return of Coach, ABC Wednesday. Back to the action, it's Marcus Brigham on first down and 10 for Wyoming. Brigham. And here's a look at that last field goal by Pochman. He missed it by that much. He had the aim, but not the leg. And you can see how quickly it was spinning, even in slow motion there, Mark. That's what happens when you hit the ball a little bit too low, a little bit below that white line is where all the kickers try to put their foot on it. And as a result of that, it spun out, it went higher, but it didn't have any distance on it. Second down and four for the Cowboys. The give is to Brigham again, who's brought down at the 35-yard line, back to John Saunders in New York. Mark, your game is huge because BYU now has a shot at getting into the Sugar Bowl. Take a look at this play. Fourth and inches, and they go for the pass at their own 29. James Brown to Derek Lewis goes 60 yards. It sets up a Priest Holmes touchdown, and John McAvick gambles and wins. Texas over Nebraska 37-27. Also a big game tonight at 8, Florida, perhaps with a chance of a rematch with Florida State. Back to you. All right, John, on third and one, Brigham busts through oh. a tackle and has the first down for Wyoming. He, he had that whole defense up on the pile there. He almost got through there, and had he kept his balance, he might have been able to score. Wyoming, John, with its first first down of the ball game. Watch Brigham come through here. Now it's, he, he fakes inside. He eludes one tackler right there. That was Chris Ellison, number four. Now, if he could just keep his feet a little bit better, he might have been able to go all the way into the end zone, but he gets first things first, and that's the first down. You heard John Saunders mention it moments ago, BYU with a shot at the Sugar Bowl if they win today. Boy, John Makovic would be pretty good in Vegas right now, rolling the dice on that fourth and short play. Well, how about James Brown with the prediction? I mean, I haven't heard a prediction like that since Joe Namath in 69. Well worked. Predicting that things would go well for the Cowboys, and they did on that play, Marcus Harris down to the 43-yard line, another first down on that 19-yard gain. You know, it's interesting about Harris, too. Let's watch his footwork on the sideline at the end of that play. He got that left foot. He kept it down just in time. 
Now, bowl game statistics do not count toward career stats, but championship games like this do. So he has that 4,400 yards. He's going to keep tacking on to the yardage throughout this game today. And those are his numbers for the year coming into this game. 1,532 yards. Quite a year he's had. Mm, you can say that. One for four is quarterback Josh Walwer. Brigham on the draw. Fumbles it. Still loose. And out of bounds. <laughs> Wyoming retaining possession. That ball traveled 20 yards horizontally going outside from the hash mark all the way out to the sideline, and nobody could get to it. Joe Tiller will lose a few more hairs on the top of his head as a result of that. Look at Shea Muirbrook in the middle for BYU. He's taking on center Rob Rathman. We saw them yesterday sitting next to one another at lunch. There goes the football. There goes everybody chasing for it, and nobody gets a hand on it until it goes out of bounds. Spencer Reed ripping it loose for the Cougars. Second and five. Incomplete. Broken up nicely that time by number 30, Ben Cook, for the Cougars. The backup corner. It was intended for Harris. Yeah, Ben Cook, is. Uh, they're in a nickel front right now. They have five defensive backs in the football game. There was a blitz that was called. He was locked in man-to-man -man coverage, and that was very good man-to-man -man coverage. Now, keep in mind, this Wyoming offense is going to move Marcus Harris around a great deal today. They know that he's the intended receiver. BYU does. So they're going to line him up in the backfield, line him up out wide. Now he's in a trip set up at the top, the left side of the formation, but they're going to try and move him all day. We haven't seen them run that flanker screen for him yet. Harris complete on the quick slant, a first down at BYU's 28-yard line. Ellison making the stop, but not after a 10-yard pickup by Marcus Harris, the premier receiver in the country. Marcus Harris lined up wide. He came inside. Again, he's working on Chris Ellison, but I mean, that is perfectly executed. He's lined up wide enough with a split to work inside against man-to-man -man coverage. When you line up in a no-backfield formation, the defense is stretched from sideline to sideline, and you open up those throwing lanes for the receivers. And they stretch the defense again this time with four wideouts. To the backfield. Front. Harris. And it's whistled dead, incomplete, at the 35. John, you mentioned them moving him around. That time, Harris lining up in the backfield. And folks, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Harris out of the backfield, John. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they want to move him around. Here's a place where they can get him isolated on the linebacker, hopefully one-on-one. -on -one. That's the case. Brad Martin had him in coverage there, number 10, but he dropped the football. Second down and 10. The nose of the ball of the 28 for Wyoming. Brigham in motion to the top of your screen. Well work on the out pattern, incomplete, intended for David Seraf. So ben Cook twice now has shown very good coverage. Number 30 for BYU comes in as a nickelback. Made some big plays in the Utah game so that they could clinch the division championship and play in this game today. Ben Cook at twice now in very tight coverage in this side of the field. BYU with the number one defense in the Western Athletic Conference. Now looking at third down and 10 for Wyoming. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Marcus Harris is the middle one. Piece is split to the bottom. Looking for Harris in traffic. Almost picked off again. Incomplete. Omar Morgan with the hit and batting it down. It's very tight coverage. Omar Morgan going to play in one-on-one, hey, -on -one, and this is what makes this team so good. He mirrors them. It's underneath coverage. He tips the ball away, and there's a host of players around there. Again, the ball's a little bit behind, and I, I talk about the footwork of Josh Walworth. You could see where that ball sailed. It was behind the receiver. He's got to step and throw that football with more velocity. His coaches have been working on that all week. Corey Weedle trying to tie the game up at three, and he misses. No good. The all-whack first-team selection, who was 19 of 24 coming into the game, missing on that one. And it's still 3 to nothing. 
Well, folks, kick off the new year with us. The Tournament of Roses Parade begins at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific, then at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. Join us in Orlando for the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. That's all New Year's Day right here on ABC Sports. As the bowl picture begins to come just a little bit clearer now, Texas stunning Nebraska moments ago on a game you saw on ABC. BYU now with an opportunity to go to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And Brian McKenzie might have sugar on his mind. A nice run for the first down. 15-yard pickup, Robbie Duncan on the tackle. Well, the J.C. transfer came into this program this year. Brian McKenzie to trap play right up the middle. Good block by the left guard, 59, James Johnson to seal that and allow McKenzie to break through. He's the second leading rusher in junior college last year to Corey Dillon of Washington, who had such a great year for the Huskies this year. Good explosiveness that time. First and 10 from the 42. The Cougars running again. McKenzie again plowing his way over the 45 brought down to the 47 yard line Jay Jenkins and Brian Lee making the tackle seven seconds remaining in the quarter the clock still running the BYU Cougars thinking about getting a berth in an alliance bowl with a win it's three to nothing after the first 15 minutes in Las Vegas it's the only one out there. And here it comes. The only compact pickup to offer a third door. Okay, folks. Show's over. Chevy S10, like a rock. Take a stroll down memory lane at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You crushed my knee, it was your toes. You broke my ribs, it was your nose. Ah, yes. Oh. I remember it well. You sacked me once. I sacked it twice. In pouring rain. No, it was nice. Ah, yes. I but when you go, don't forget well. your Visa card, because the hall takes the NFL's best, but not American Express. See ya, Nitschke. It's Butkus. Oh, yeah. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. I'm not crazy about this artificial turf. Looks like shag carpeting. Got no give. <laughs> no big deal. After all, this is American. We play football no matter what. Lizards, floods, tropical storms, I've seen it all. And let me tell you this. If a meteorite hit the earth tomorrow, you just wait for the darn thing to cool off, draw a field in the ashes, run it in for six points, and spike it to the end zone. The Panasonic Razor. Shave wet or shave dry. Your choice. Your shave. Rinse clean. Work hard. Play hard. Shave your way. Panasonic. The Versapack system by Black & Decker. Versatile, economical, and it makes a great gift. Versapack by Black & Decker. Smile for the camera. Back in Las Vegas, it's three to nothing as we start the second quarter. BYU leading Wyoming. Second down and four for the Cougars. Sarkeesian to pass, complete over the middle to Kiala Louie, down near the 40-yard line, stopped at the 42, an 11-yard pickup and a first down for BYU. Now look at the per-game averages, John. Well, first of all, you know, Wyoming gives up a lot of yards on defense, but they lead the league at the conference in sacks and in turnovers. Uh, that's why, they, you know, they don't really care about gross yardage. BYU, you can see 300 yards a game. But they started rushing the football a lot better. Last three games, they've averaged over 300 yards a game rushing. Thanks to McKenzie and Jenkins. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Come on, come on. They run it on first and 10. 
And a look at the numbers after the first 15 minutes of play. Like we said, right, John? Offense rules in the conference. Offense rules. Both these teams average about 500 yards a game in total offense. Look at this. 56 yards for Wyoming, 60 for BYU. So I guess we can call it defensive struggle so far. So much for the way we talked about this game and our expectations. McKenzie running on that last attempt, getting two yards. It's second down and eight. Ball at the 40-yard line. Cougars lead three to nothing. Out of the backfield. That's James Don. Jai can make things happen. A first down at the 29-yard line. Die picking up 12 yards. Chuck Polson making the tackle. But James Die, number six, the 5'9", diminutive senior from Oakland, California, symbolizes all the things that are good about college football. Yeah, K.O. Kialaloui came in from the outside and threw a block, too, that sprung James Die. And, of course, he's got such great speed and skill. All you need is a little bit of crap for him. Four career touchdowns returning punts. Here's a look at Jenkins out of the backfield. And that's Jenkins. Sarkeesian giving him a block. Jenkins down to the 17-yard line. Another Brigham Young University first down. And here's part of the newfound running attack that BYU has put together. It's just a little spinner. I watch Jenkins is going to get the ball and just reverse out. They take advantage of Jeff Leonard, 90. He's an aggressive inside rusher. Sarkeesian's out leading the way. And Ronnie Jenkins can play football. He's a true freshman. He once ran for 619 yards in a high school game last year. <laughs> oh, man. On a May high school, Ventura, California. And look, there's the rushing game. The last three games, both of these players have averaged 300 yards now, or 300 yards total for each player, and four touchdowns in those last three games. It's a newfound rushing attack for the Cougars. Edwards loves it, too. This is Jenkins again. Over the right side, Ronnie Jenkins. Running down to the 11-yard line, brought down by Levingston. <laughs> Dustin Johnson with a nice block that time for Jenkins. You know, it's interesting, too, about Jenkins and the red zone offense. Very, I mean, you want to talk about two teams to score over 40 points a game. This is why. They get in the red zone, and they score touchdowns. They get away with points. But Jenkins, you know, about the fourth or fifth day in the training camp, Lavelle Edwards said, I knew this kid was way ahead of his years, and I knew he was going to be an exciting running back for us. And they tried to bring him along slowly early, but now he's the kind of guy they just they want to play and they want to lean on as much as possible. Yeah, youth being served now. McKenzie in the game for Jenkins. Johnson in motion. It's McKenzie. McKenzie needs a block. McKenzie takes it to the house. Touchdown, Cougars. His great running skills by Brian McKenzie, the J.C. transfer, came into this team, and that's a great one-two punch these two uh, schools have, or this team has right now when it's running back. He puts a great move on Brian Lee, the strong safety. Fakes him out, and Lee came up and completely whiffed. Potchman in for the extra point. The Cougars lead 9-0 out of the hold of Alan Boardman. Hodgman nails it, and BYU leads 10 to nothing. This run by McKenzie, capping an eight-play, 72-yard drive. We'll be right back. two colors boys prefer most. Black and blue. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real, comfortable 
jeans. Only from Domino's, new garlic crunch crust pizza, roasted garlic, baked right into our classic hand-tossed dough, then sprinkled with Parmesan crunchies all around the edge. It's a delicate blend of herbs and garlic in every bite of our delicious steaming crust. Wow. Call now and get a large one topping just $9.99. New garlic crunch crust for a limited time only. For hot and wild, call Domino. College basketball's best hit the hardwood. The Michigan Wolverines take on the Duke Blue Devils or other regional action. It's Payne Weber College Basketball tomorrow on ABC. BYU leading 10 to nothing, courtesy of that 11-yard touchdown run by Brian McKenzie. Lavelle Edwards telling us earlier that the turning point in their season was the Tulsa game when they discovered that they could run the ball consistently. You saw that 72 yards there. 50 of those yards came on the ground, Mark. A running school now. Imagine that. This is Brigham, who takes a knee in the end zone. Well, tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, the PGA and the LPGA Tours pair up in sunny Tarpon Springs, Florida. You'll see defending champs Davis Love III and Beth Daniel, as well as red-hot rookie Tiger Woods at the J.C. Penney Classic. We'll have the final round tomorrow here on ABC. Woods and his partner one shot back going into today's round. Lavelle Edwards, 25 years as head coach. He embodies everything about BYU football. Yeah, you know what he said? He said, we've been throwing the football so long, we thought we'd put a little fun back in the game and <laughs> run it now. Wyoming goes empty. Well worked to pass. Uh -huh. Overthrows Marcus Harrison. John, there again, you mentioned earlier, he's got to put a little velocity under the ball. That time, he seemed to lack a little. Yeah, he sure did. Now, you know, when a receiver goes from left to right, it's a lot difficult, it's pretty difficult sometimes for the quarterback just to step and throw. But you saw how much that ball is floating on. He's just got to step and fire it. He has the arm strength. He's just not using good footwork. He's not pointing that left shoulder. And it's funny how Joe Tiller just emphasized that all week. And I thought, you know, this is the number one passing offense. How could you have a problem with a quarterback delivering the ball? But we've seen it about three, four times now over the middle. And he's got a problem now. He's just two of ten. He's missed his last four passings. Sexton in motion to the top of the screen. Walworth eluding one tackler. Completes the pass. And now it's ruled incomplete. It was intended for Sexton, and he was out of bounds. So it'll be third down and 10 for Wyoming. They trail 10 to nothing with 11.38 to play in the first half. Look at the two respective quarterbacks. Nearly identical statistics. Yeah, they are. Well worked with 31 touchdowns, and Sarkeesian with 32. Now, Sarkeesian did his damage in 13 games. What's interesting here, Sarkeesian is a higher-rated quarterback than Walworks because he has a higher completion percentage. That whole pass efficiency rating, that's one of the factors. Walworks completing 64% of his passes and completing that one to Marcus Harris at the 38-yard line for a first down, a pickup of 18 yards. He got to Eddie Sampson, who pushed him out of bounds. Harris is the... Belitnikov finalist works inside and back outside. This is a ball, the corner route that Walwork has done a very good job delivering as he cuts underneath Eddie Sampson. Ball floats out inside. Sampson doesn't get there in time, and he does Chris Ellison. So he's working on two safeties there. Remember, Omar Morgan has done a nice job against them, but there he's working against two safeties as part of that formation, giving Harris an advantage. Got to keep an eye on Harris. They are moving him around. Way back drawn, first and ten, Walworth. Not the quickest quarterback afoot, out to the 43-yard line. He'll have close to five on first down. Shea Muirbrook, number 46, making the tackle for the BYU Cougars out of Norco, California. He's the team's leading tackler and the team captain, an all-whack performer as well. Had an interception against Utah a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Muirbrook said a couple of scouts came through and said he might not be tall enough. He said football isn't a vertical game. It's a horizontal game. You fill the hole. He said height has nothing to do with making tackles. That's He's got a chip on his shoulder about that. That's Zach Thomas. He knows the same. Second and five. Sexton trying to get to the corner. Pushed out of bounds at the 44-yard line that time. Four yards short of the first down. It'll be third down coming up. Eddie Sampson 
the safety, the free safety coming up to push him out. Look at Sexton's numbers in 1996. Not quite as explosive as his backup, Marcus Brigham. Different running styles. Good receiver out of the backfield. That he is. Brigham's a little bit more powerful, got a little bit more of a slashing style, but both of these uh, running backs run the ball effectively enough for Wyoming to do so much in their passing game. See how spread out they are. You know, it makes it easier to run inside when you spread out a defense. Third down and four. They go with four lineouts. Walworth looks to the near sideline and right at the first down marker complete to Durenincourt. And it's a first down for the Cowboys at the 49-yard line, their own 49. You know, one thing that's great pass protection there in the face of a blitz. Watch all the linemen up front block inside out. If you want a blitzer to come, make them come from the outside. You see Yerbrook get cut down in the middle. Nobody's around Walworth, even though there was a blitz. And that's what this offensive line does real well. They zone everything off inside. If people come free, they're going to come from the outside. That gives Walworth a little more time and a better lane in which to throw in. Yeah, they've only given up 21 sacks this season. Single back set. The draw play to Brigham. And Brigham has nowhere to go. Tackled at the 46-yard line. Well, folks, the WAC Championship on ABC Sports is brought to you by Jeep. Makers of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. And true value, no matter what you need, help is just around the corner. A beautiful backdrop here today at Sam Board Stadium. The Western Athletic Conference Championship game, the inaugural championship game. Look at the mountains there in the background. A little postcard shot there. Second down and 13 for Josh Walwork in Wyoming. They trail 10 to nothing. BYU blitzing. Walwork overthrows Harris at the 35-yard line. And Walwork went down on the play. Tim McTire, Tim McTire in on the coverage of number 23, Harris. Harris tried to sneak in as a tight end. Then he split out to a split end. Joe Tiller trying to move him around as much as possible in this offense. One thing, I watched a lot of film on Harris. I was up in Laramie this week. The only thing I can figure out is right there where he is in the huddle. <laughs> Everything else. I, he said, did you get a pattern yet? I said, no, Joe, I, I haven't figured it out. He goes, good. <laughs> he says, let me know when you do. Then I know we have some tendencies. So don't worry about tendencies. Well, so far today, Wyoming is two of two on third down conversions. On this drive, actually, they are two of two. And they step back and call a timeout. A pensive quarterback walking to the sidelines. The Cougars lead by 10 when we come back. Precious Hotline, what's your problem? We're stuck with skunky beer. So it's not Budweiser. No. Remain calm, sir. We're on our way. Next time, look for this. New Born On Dating from Budweiser, because fresh beer tastes better. Precious Hotline. Could we order some Chinese? improvements made to the new Jeep Wrangler, like dual front airbags and an easier to use soft top. It's the changes we've made beneath the surface that will really get your attention. Ten to nothing with 9:34 to play in the second quarter. Wyoming trying to avenge a 23 to 20 loss last year to the Cougars. Looking at third down and 13 for Joe Tiller's crew. No backs, they go empty. 
Walworth has his receiver. And they come up short of the first down to the 44-yard line. Richard Peace, number two, made the catch. And he was brought down nicely by Ben Cook, who didn't go for the fake. Cook has made some key tackles so far in the early going. And Wyoming will have to punt with 9-12 remaining in the first half. There is a look at number 30, Ben Cook, the 6'1", 185-pound junior. Aaron Langley into punt. Averaging 34 yards today. And James Dye, number six. Back for the Cougars. And a flag after some movement on the interior line. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. They did get some movement in the interior line, but everybody's in a two-point stance. Ball start. Number 36 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. And because you're in a two-point stance, you're allowed to reset yourself. Now, if your hand's down on the ground, you pick it up, then it's a penalty. It's Chuck Paulson, number 36. See, they're, they're leaning a little bit. 36, you don't see in your picture there. He's on the right side, but, you know, you're allowed to move a little bit when you're in that position. You have to stay set for a second for the ball snap, but... We'll do it again. Ty still standing on his own 10-yard line for BYU. He's got two punts returned for touchdowns this year. Langley airs this one up high. Man, is that high. Die with a fair catch at the 21-yard line. Talked about Wyoming trying to avenge the loss, the three-point loss from a year ago. This week, we take a look back to last season when these two teams met. Third quarter action, there he is, James Dye on the punt return. How do you say 90-yard return for a touchdown? Dye got a couple of good blocks and was sprung loose. Could not be run down from behind, and the Cougars went on to win it 23-20. to We were talking to Dye earlier a couple days ago. He says that of all the punt returners that he's watching, he watches a lot of video. Ismail, Rocket Ismail is the guy that he admires the most. 8.37 to play in the first half. BYU leading 10-0. Out to the 29-yard line is Brian McKenzie for the Cougars. Don't forget, coming up next, a huge one. Number four, Florida against Alabama in the Georgia Dome. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper next on ABC. Florida could go to the Nokia Sugar Bowl with a win. Or BYU with a win here today, right now, could end up in the Sugar Bowl as well. Second down and seven for the Cougars. Eight minutes to play in the first half. And Alago, Sarkeesian has a man open. Incomplete to Ben Cahoon downstairs to Dean Blevins. Well, Mark, I'm with a guy who would like to be out there, but two weeks ago, Eric Bateman, an offensive tackle for BYU, broke a left ankle, and he's recovering now. But, Eric, a lot of talk about the bowl alliance. We haven't heard much from the BU players. Your thoughts? Well, you know, if we get uh, accepted to the alliance, I think it would be more than an, an honor for uh, from the Alliance Association. We're not banking on anything, but we're just, we, we hope that we get, you know, accepted and get chosen. I want to ask you about a book after this play. I know that you took a mission to Ohio, did some research, and it's an interesting story. We'll come back and top it off. All right. All right, Dean. Third down and seven for BYU, and the Cougars call timeout. They want to talk it over. They now have two timeouts remaining in the first half. 10 nothing when we come back. engineers gave it the largest interior in its class. They made room for the biggest engine available and specified the longest wheelbase. Then they added one more surprise, the taut, precise steering feel of a sports sedan. So when Sport Truck Magazine named the new Dodge Dakota Sport Truck of the Year, we were honored, but not surprised. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. It's the nation's first true super conference, and it's quickly establishing itself as a leader in college athletics. There's world-renowned academics, nationally respected athletics. 
16 schools, nine states, five time zones, 4,000 miles from Houston to Honolulu. That's the Western Athletic Conference. It's leading the way. I'd love to play at the next level. That'd be incredible. But if it all ended today, um, I would not have any regrets. I really like children, and my third grade teacher really stuck out in my mind, and so I wanted to work with the children somehow, and I figured education was a way I could get in there and maybe be a positive role model on some children. I like the teachers who are willing to go that extra step to help you. We have those professors here at the university, and those are the ones that I remember. Third and seven for BYU, and this the inaugural WAC championship game. BYU, the champs of the Mountain Division, Wyoming, the Pacific Division. Third and seven, Sarkeesian. Set back at the 22-yard line. This Wyoming Cowboy defense led the conference in sacks. There you see an illustration of why. Larson and Hansen lowering the boom on Sarkeesian. This is just a covered sack, too. Sarkeesian had time to throw, but the linemen are working a twist inside. There comes pressure up the middle there from Pat Larson, number 92. And finally, Larson comes back around the outside when Sarkeesian tries to escape and makes the sack. Sarkeesian did have some time to step up and throw the football, but it was good zone coverage down downfield. A look at the eyes of Marcus Harris. Looking for a punt return, standing in his own 25. Here's Boardman with the punt. Harris at the 27. Cuts it inside. Oh, Harris. <laughs> Gang tackled at the 43-yard line. He looked like a puppet up there, didn't he? Wow, like a red doll. A 51-yard punt and a 16-yard return by Harris. Jeff Ellis making the tackle. You don't want to be hung up in the air when you have that thing under your arm, that left arm of his. Right here, he gets held up. Boom, he gets hit. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins to finish off that story. All right, yeah, back with Eric Bateman. Uh, you, and, you and 39 other players have had two-year missions. You came out of your mission hoping to write a book. Yeah, uh, the last about three or four years, I've been uh, compiling some uh, a book that's uh, hopefully it will be approved. It's uh, going before the first presidency of the church. Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints and uh, it's uh, kind of a documentary book a biography type you know uh, for church members and other people about the truth of the gospel and different things all right Eric good luck to you thanks for your time thanks a lot Dean a 19 yard pickup that time by Marcus Brigham Lane Hale making the tackle you know John if if I go on a Mormon mission I want to go to somewhere exotic like New Zealand or Australia, <laughs> Fiji, yeah. Africa Ohio just doesn't cut it for me. <laughs> Nothing personal with all those from Ohio. Wyoming not doing a whole lot offensively in this game so far. They had the one drive, 11 plays, missed field goal, and then their last drive was nine plays that resulted in the punt. So they seem to be gaining some momentum with their last two drives. And, of course, with Brigham's carry there, they got a good start on this drive. Still no points on the board, though. Walzer blocks it off to Harris, and he's picked off. Lane Hale... The strong safety came over for the pinch, and Walworth throws his second interception of the ball game. Yeah, that's a pass that never should have been thrown by Josh Walworth. Lane Hales dropped back. He's in a safety position, and it's actually kind of a two-deep zone. There's Lane Hale. Now there's two people that are going to cover Harris right here. They want to try and keep as many people on Harris as possible. He's a release inside. Look where that ball's thrown. Back over the outside, but right to the safety. I mean, Walwick has got to read the coverage and not just look to his primary receiver here. There's Harris working one-on-one, -on -one, but he escapes inside of McTire, but there's a safety over the top. Got to look for coverage downfield. BYU as a result with the ball at the 26-yard line, first down and 10. Dustin Johnson. The big fullback with a first down out to the 39-yard line. Robbie Duncan, the safety making the tackle, a 13-yard pickup. Dustin Johnson, the 6'2", 235-pound junior. Nimble feet here, John. Hey, he's good. He doesn't carry the ball all that much because he does a lot of blocking in that split-back set for the other two running backs, but 
That's good running inside, and that was all made possible by this offensive line. It's the most, most physical, athletic offensive line that Lavelle Edwards has ever had at BYU. BYU running the ball well this day with 5.48 to play in the first half. They lead 10 to nothing. Sarkeesian hands it off to number 16, Ronnie Jenkins. And that's just an inside zone play. It's a play that they ran very effectively when they won the Mountain Division in the WAC against Utah. They ran it so effectively, they ran that play 29 times in the football game. I talked to Norm Chow, the offensive coordinator, and he said, well, you know, a lot of coordinators think they got to change things all the time. He said, if something works, I keep calling it. I think there's a lot of brilliance in that simplicity there. Continuity has been a signature of BYU's passing system as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they have eight plays that they run. They've been doing it for decades. Norm Child's in his 19th year on the staff, and they have a lot of formations off those eight plays that they throw, but uh, that's the basis of their running game, second their passing game. Second down and six, flag down. Sarkeesian delivers incomplete for Kiala Louie. We'll have to see what this flag is about at the 43-yard line. Kiala Louie running this slant. It was incomplete. Galilee was slanting over the middle. The KO coming across there. The ball's tipped so he can get hit, and he was hit. And he almost got hit after this play. He had to protect himself. See it right there? There was another body flying by for him. Jim Talich put his hand on the football and knocked it away. Offside, number 99 on the defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the second down. That infraction on Stuart Hansen. There he is. The 6'3", 257-pound junior. Third on the team in sacks with five. That time a little bit over-anxious, maybe. Getting too close, encroaching on that zone. Second down and two as a result. 4.44 to play in the first half. BYU leading 10 to nothing. Out near midfield is Brian McKenzie with a first down for the Cougars. A look at the series record, BYU with the lead. Two charter members of the Western Athletic Conference doing battle today, and I guess a little poetic justice, John, in the fact that both are playing in the inaugural championship game here. That's exactly right. It's one of the best rivalries in the WAC going back to 1962. There were six teams in the Western Athletic Conference, and these two teams here today have shared the title more than any other team in the WAC. So, and they didn't play, as you said, so it was only fitting. They, at the banquet yesterday, Lavelle Edwards and Joe Tiller talked about the fact that it's great that they're both playing in this game today. Ronnie Jenkins is the deep back in the offset on. That's Johnson in motion. They come back on the counter. Jenkins, over midfield, brought down at the 49-yard line. He'll have about two on the play. Stuart Hansen, number 99, making the tackle for the Cowboys. Well, this is a real upfield pressure defense that the Cowboys are playing right now. It's the kind of defense that sets you up for trap plays, but also for uh, screen plays. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cougars here tried to screen the ball in the middle of the field. I saw them working on it in practice. You know, a lot of times you just try and set things up. There's Brock Spack working on some spit. <laughs> <laughs> They're primarily a zone defense team, too, aren't they, John? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. They try and keep everything in front of them. They're too deep zone. Brock Spack right there. We caught him in a, one of his less flattering <laughs> moments. <laughs> Second down and eight for BYU. Sarkeesian complete. Over the middle and finally brought down at the 29-yard line is Kiala Louie by... Janae Jackson, a pickup of 20 yards and a first down for Sarkeesian's Cougars. Well, I just didn't see a lot of room there for K.O. Kialalui to catch that football. He'll be coming across from right to left, number three for BYU, and very tight coverage, but Sarkeesian steps up, and unlike his counterpart, steps up and throws a strike there to Kialalui, right in front of Brian Lee, number 45, the strong safety. Kiela Louie won the Texas A&M game on a touchdown catch on a streak route. He's a fun kid. I watch him at practice. He likes to goof on other players. <laughs> He's always running around with a big smile on his face. Here's Jenkins running around, but this time brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 34-yard line. A nice surge that time coming from Jeff Leonard, number 90, the top sack man on the team that time with a tackle for loss, a loss of five yards on the play. Jeff Leonard leads this team in sacks. 
He's very physical. He works one-on-one. -on -one. I saw him in practice this week working with Steve Cyphers, giving him all the battling he could and helping Cyphers become a better tackle. And Brock Speck likes that. He says, I like to get all those guys and rotate them through on Cyphers and see how they can man up against our best pass-blocking tackle. But Jeff Leonard does a great job in rushing the quarterback. Second down and 15 now for BYU. Play fake. Sarkeesian backside pressure, and he's brought down to the 37-yard line by Chuck Polson. Polson getting the start today in place of number 13, Brian Brown. Yeah, and oddly enough, the reason Polson got the start, Mark, was to stop the running game. <laughs> Something that we're having a little trouble grappling with. But Polson comes in from the right side. That first play, you know, that when you get a second and long, that sets up a defense and you can start to gamble and do, do a little bit more things. So back-to-back -back losses now by BYU. A conspicuously low-scoring game at 10 to nothing with 1.45 to play in the first half. Third and 17 for the Cougars. Out of the backfield, Johnson catches it. He's brought down at the 29-yard line, short of the first down by about 10 yards. Wayman Levingston, number 24, in on the tackle on the play, along with Vaughn Lee. And in comes the field goal unit, led by Ethan Pochman for BYU. Pochman, one of two on the day. Pochman started at Washington, a former soccer player. And like Lee Johnson, his predecessor, never played football before this year. This field goal attempt from 46 yards out. And he nails it. It's good. And he had a lot of room to spare. Kochman giving the Cougars a 13-point lead with less than a minute to play in the first half. Do you think he liked it? I think so. Let's go to John Saunders in New York. Mark, coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, we'll look back at that Big 12 championship game. We'll also have Keith Jackson with a look ahead to the SEC, and this picture now is suddenly wide open. Yeah, well, the big picture has gotten a lot more exciting. We'll try to sort it all out for you at halftime. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. Right now, let's take you back to the WAC and join Mark Jones. Mark. Okay, John, 55 seconds to play in the first half in an uncharacteristically low-scoring game. Both these teams averaging right around 40 per game. And right now, it's 13-0 for BYU. Time of possession edge is incredible here. BYU with almost 20 minutes to almost 10 there for Wyoming. You know, what's interesting about this is Wyoming only averages 28 minutes a game. So because they throw the football so much, they don't normally have the edge in time of possession, but they're, you know, they don't have the football in their hands much today, and two interceptions is a big reason for that. John, things started off poorly from, for Wyoming right from the jump. They had troubles getting here, even with their flight. <laughs> Arriving late on Friday. Hutchman's kick eight yards deep in the end zone. Brigham takes a knee. Well, tomorrow night on ABC starts with an hour of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by a brand new Lois and Clark. Then Wesley Snipes stars in the story of a plane hijacking gone wrong. One of my favorites, folks. Remember, remember that famous line? He said, uh, you ever play Russian roulette? Always bet on black. Wesley Snipes, passenger 57. <laughs> Twelve well, night on the ABC Sunday Night Movie. You're in the right town to take care of that if you want to, Mark. <laughs> Did I say roulette? <laughs> oh, no, my pockets are kind of empty. You know, Wyoming right now only has 105 yards of offense. They average about 500 a game. Ball works 5 for 16. 62 yards and two interceptions. So, not played well in the first half so far. And lacking that zip on the ball today. Escaping pressure. Walworks is going to run it himself. He tiptoes out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and the clock failed to move on that play. And the ref just, <laughs> the ref just got knocked down. A lot of bad things happening here. The referee shouldn't go down on the ground. The clock should work. Clock with a little malfunction. Not sure how much time should have elapsed, but might be I'm a, sure they get it straightened out. Might be a cowboy on that trigger for the clock, right? <laughs> Yeah, speaking of Cowboys, a big week here in Las Vegas for Cowboys with the National Finals Rodeo. A lot of Cowboy hats in town. 
along with the Wyoming Cowboys who trail 13 to nothing. Yeah, that rodeo is a hard ticket to get. It well, sure is. A lot of prize money at stake. Got cowboy hats and belt buckles. And yeah. Look at that belt buckle on that guy. <laughs> wow. A lot of Wyoming fans making the trip from Laramie to support their team. And they're a program that has come under criticism of late for not having fans that support their team. So you, you see on the sidelines there, Lavelle Edwards and his staff are getting after the officials for the problem with the clock. They recognize it as well. Now it's at 49 seconds, so they have adjusted it. Joe Tiller, perhaps his last game as head coach for Wyoming if they do not go to a bowl game. Second down and six. Tiller's crew will go to Purdue next year. This is Sexton. Sexton down to the 30-yard line with 42 seconds to play in the first half. Clock running. Hale making the tackle for the Cougars. It's been a first half where BYU has capitalized on a couple of turnovers, a couple of interceptions thrown by Josh Walwood. Ravel Edwards, 25 years as head coach. He said that now that Joe Tiller is leaving, next year that he'll be the most bald baldest coach he called it, <laughs> in the conference watch this block by rob bollinger the left tackle comes down on muirbrook muirbrook never saw him and that's where size does play a factor sometimes when you're playing middle linebacker back to the action sexton out over the 40 yard line and a first down for wyoming hale again on the tackle an 11 yard pickup for sexton well, what kind of admission is this you have a team that averages 366 yards a game they're in a two-minute drill, and they've just run the ball on back-to-back -back plays. It you know, makes no sense. It means that wall work, I think, uh, they're giving up on halftime here. They're not trying to score. They have good field position. They have two timeouts. You know, I don't understand what they're doing right now offensively, but, uh, you know, I guess wall work is just going to try and take it into the locker room and regroup and come out in the second half, but there's some booze here. And the Cowboy fans that made the trip from Laramie, hours from Laramie, don't like it. A chorus of boos raining on Joe Tiller as they head to the locker room at halftime, trailing BYU 13-0. Valvoline halftime is next with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. 13-0 the score. All right, Mark, thanks a lot. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, we'll look back at the Big 12 Championship game. Big surprise in that one. Also, Army, Navy, and Keith Jackson joins us with a preview of the SEC Championship game. Stick around. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. University of Wyoming. He's 34 years of age. He's been the offensive coordinator at Kansas State the past couple of years. Uh, Lee Moon, actually the athletic director at Wyoming, actually coached uh, Demo back in 1985 when he was the interim coach at Kansas State. He loves his enthusiasm. He loves the fact that he was under Bill Snyder, one of the great organizers in college football, has a lot of enthusiasm. And Dana Demo will be the next head coach for the University of Wyoming. All right, Scoop Blevins with the story. Joe Tiller wants to take his entire coaching staff to Purdue. wonder if the Big Ten is going to be ready for that passing offense. That's true. You know, you're right about that. I mean, the spread out offense, throwing the football in every down, cold weather, but they do it in Wyoming and it's cold weather. But uh, he said it's going to take him a couple years to recruit the kind of kids he needs to run this offense at Purdue. Weedle kicking off for Wyoming. BYU will be on offense to start the third quarter. There's Ronald Jenkins, the track man. Nice return out to the 33-yard line. A 29-yard return. Brian Brown making the tackle for Wyoming. Look at the halftime numbers. Well, the thing that jumps out is the lack of productivity in the passing game from Wyoming. 366 yards a game, only 62 in the first half. If you read down, you look at the turnovers right here. It's been costly as well as it's led to six points off the turnovers. We have a flag down on the field. And Jenkins' 29-yard kickoff return will be partially nullified. The infraction against the Cougars. Here's the call. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Late hit, number nine on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty. First down. So they push the ball back to the 18-yard line of the Cougars. That's Dennis Simmons called on the infraction to back up linebacker. It's the first penalty today against the Cougars. So, you know, Tiller complained about last year's game that James Dye on return for 90 yards. He said there could have been a, a few uh, flags thrown on that play. 
said the officials and the team were playing against them that day. Trying to avenge that loss of a year ago. Yalalui in motion to the top of your screen, first and ten. Sarkeesian complete over the middle. Out of the backfield, number 32, the running back, Dustin Johnson, with the catch. You know, for a running back, he averages 17.2 yards per reception. Now, he hasn't averaged that today, but coming into this game, he did. That's the second highest on the team. It's, it's very odd for a running back to have those kind of average. If he could only get a ride from practice, though, right? Yeah, that's right. Watched him the other day. The whole team left the stadium. They all had rides in their cars. I offered him a ride. And his wife said uh, I was going to pick him up. He's waiting outside for his wife. I saw him here the other day. He said, no, she never showed up. <laughs> I'm sure they'll talk about that one. Here's Jenkins. Tiptoeing through the hole out to the 28-yard line. Ronnie Jenkins tackled by Taylor. Jim Talich, who has led this team in tackles for three straight years. He's the first player to do that at Wyoming since his brother Corey did it some years ago. And he's a stout linebacker, plays inside real hard. You know, both of these linebackers play the run probably a little too aggressively. That's why we've seen a lot of attempts over the middle in passing today by both offenses. All three linebackers, over 100 tackles this year for Wyoming. Yalalui in motion to the top of your screen. First and ten, Sarkeesian hands it off to Justin Johnson. Johnson from Edgar, Arizona. Coaches say he's underrated. Blocks runs those traps very well, too. There's a guy that did a good job at the banquet the other day. <laughs> he was running around making us all dizzy, wasn't he? Second down and eight. BYU with a win today could get an at-large berth in the Bowl Alliance. Possibly the Sugar Bowl. Sarkeesian sacked and fumbled. Wyoming's going to take it in for the score. Jade Jenkins with the touchdown. This is what this defense specializes in, sacks and turnovers. 34 turnovers on the year. That's the 35th there. They sack the quarterback. They create pressure up front. Boy, this team needed this kind of lift to get back into this football game. BYU's first turnover of the day. And here's another look at the hit that caused the fumble on the play. Yeah, it comes right through the middle there. That's Jim Talich, the middle linebacker on a stunt around the outside. Mr. Johnny on the spot, Jay Jenkins, is right there to pick it up. And who would have thought that the first points today for Wyoming would have been scored by the defense? They finally get on the board with 12.53 to play in the third period. Weedle with the extra point out of the hole to the punter, Aaron Langley. Hey, folks, you know what? It's a ball game, 13 to 7. The Cowpokes on the board in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. Only from Domino's, new garlic crunch crust pizza, roasted garlic, baked right into our classic hand-tossed dough, then sprinkled with Parmesan crunchies all around the edge. It's a delicate blend of herbs and garlic in every bite of our delicious steaming crust. Call now and get a large one topping just $9.99. New Garlic Crunch Crust, for a limited time only. For hot and wild, call Domino. I am grateful that Michael Garcia is in our lives. State Farm Mike Garcia speaking. We had a house fire, a house burned. That was a tough day. He didn't treat us as a policyholder, he treated us as a neighbor, as a friend. I gave him a check right away. We went from there to putting the pieces back together. He's not a hero in the sense of a, a sports hero or a movie star. He's a quiet hero. He looks out for everyone in the neighborhood. It's gone from being a slogan to really being my way of life. What Tough is, is the available new Ford Triton 5.4 liter V8. What Tough does. What Tough is, it's the wide open spaces of the world's only standard third door. What tough does.
Tough is what tough does. The new Ford F-150. More trend truck of the year. Built for tough. Think these guys and gals know how to swing? Then grab your partner, because the best in men's and women's golf are ready to swing in the J.C. Penney Classic. Tomorrow on ABC. 16 Wyoming seniors playing their last game for that man, Joe Tiller, the head coach. Maybe his last game. They need a win to go to a bowl. If they lose, they stand the risk of being shut out. Ronnie Jenkins, two yards deep out of the end zone for the Cougars. Jenkins with 4-3 speed, and if you don't know, just take a look at that. We talked about Wyoming and their bowl position. If BYU wins today, they could get an Alliance Bowl berth, the Fiesta being one of them, John, or the Sugar, the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Yeah, that's exactly right. Wyoming, they have to win today, or they're basically shut out of a bowl picture as well. It's interesting, you know, one would think that with Nebraska getting beaten that BYU would slip or go up in the standings from 6th to 5th and improve their ability to get into the alliance at large bid. Todd Blackledge pointed out at halftime that may not happen. It would be a malfunction of justice if BYU won this game and didn't go to an alliance bowl. This game very much the story of an entire conference playing for respect. Here's the call. Try the snap. Ball start. Number 96 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Look at the AP rankings coming into this game. BYU at number six. So Nebraska loses, John. Right, they lose They'll to a fall. team that's not ranked in the top 25. So they have to fall. BYU should move up to number five, but Todd Blackledge pointed out, you know, maybe the Alliance Bowl wants a Fiesta Bowl matchup between Penn State and Nebraska. So there's a lot to be sorted out yet. First and 15 for the Cougars. McKenzie. And the run is stuffed at the 23-yard line. Jenkins was there. Talich was there. Brian Lee was there. Well, this defense certainly has given this team a lift right there. That's Matt Cox, number 76, pulling out in front. He can't get a hit on Brian Lee. Lee tucked under him and made the play. A pretty good play by the strong safety. Smart to tuck under those big guys when they're coming out after you. That's, that's a good career decision. Your survival, survival move right there. Second down and 14. Follow the 23-yard line for BYU. Sarkeesian's going to pass over the middle incomplete, intended for Kiala Louie. And it'll be third down and 14 to go. The Wyoming defense starting to surge here. Kiala Louie was coming back to the football. Sarkeesian threw it back over his outside area there. He's coming back on a hook pattern. So there's a little bit of a miscommunication, but suddenly this BYU offense is pressing a little bit. They haven't done well in conversions today. One for six on the day on third down conversions. And actually this season they've been at 44%. So they're well off what they traditionally do this year in third down conversions, Mark. Third down stop for the Cowboys. It'd be great for them. The screen pass. McKenzie fumbles it. And they're going to rule that he was down. And the spot of the mark is at the 31, five yards short of the first down. Joe Tiller's defense, take a bow. That was a good sequence for you. Actually, it looked like McKenzie actually was starting to stumble and fell down with the football. See, I got just got tripped a little bit. And the knees down, That no fumble from that point on. Good call by the officials. Boardman into punt. As a 53-yarder today, and Marcus Harris standing at his own 25. A low line drive punt that covers distance. Wow, back at the 12. Harris tackled at the 19-yard line. 56 yards on the punt. 13-7 when we come back. 
It's one of the most comfortable cars I've ever driven. People love talking about Ford Taurus. It's fun to drive. It really is. With Taurus, you fit in no matter what size you are. I'm big. I'm surprised by how much room there is inside it. Everybody in my family is big. Just turn the wheel a fraction of an inch. The car responds. There's a lot more room. It's designed so I don't have to search for anything. The seats feel like they wrap around you. It's a state-of-the-art car. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, starting at 18545 This car is a pleasure to drive. I have fun. The Panasonic Razor. Shave wet or shave dry. Your choice, your shave. Rinse clean. Work hard, play hard, shave your way. Panasonic. quarterback Josh Walwork had a very inauspicious first half. Through two interceptions, BYU got six points as a result. So far today, five of 16. Undaunted, he comes out throwing, but it's incomplete at the 45-yard line intended for who else? Marcus Harris. And it'll be second down and 10. Now look at his numbers today. You know, Joe Tiller told our Dean Blevins at halftime he wanted Walwork back in the locker room as quickly as possible and that's why he is Jude calling the timeouts yeah and I was surprised about that they didn't run a two-minute drill they have a great passing offense the best in the country but you know he is a resilient player in the Colorado State game which they needed to get here today he fumbled one series he got intercepted on the two next series and still came back and brought him back from 24 to 13 to win that game so he can certainly do it here today a little movement up front Sexton Flag down on the far side of the field at the 21 yard line. Sexton brought down at the 24 by Brad Martin, number 10. I think Arlen Yahoo, Ayu, and uh, Henry Bloomfield both jumped off sides and inside. Number 90 and 91, right in the middle here on that hard count. Both of them jumped off sides and just in the neutral zone, especially Bloomfield on the right side there, number 91. Yeah, Bloomfield says that his pet peeve is when. People drive slow in the fast lane. And uh, there's a guy that <laughs> was a little over anxious that time. I like him. He's, a, he's their best defensive lineman. On the defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the second down. Number 98, Isaiah Mangala. Yes. I'll tell you what, they, they call out numbers, but they call out the wrong ones in the whack, don't they? Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we saw up here. <laughs> second down and five. This is Wyoming's first offensive series of the second half. Trips to the left for Walworth. Harris is the middle receiver up top. And Harris going deep. He's open. Marcus Harris, slippery, and into the secondary, down to the 38-yard line, a 36-yard pickup, and a first down. Hale making the tackle for BYU. But they went right back to the very same plays on Omar Morgan, number one. It's the best corner on this team against the best receiver for Wyoming. And that is a most difficult catch to make. Far away from down low, he hangs with it. Makes the catch right in front of the strong safety there. Lane Hale coming across. And you know, Harris isn't going to beat you with his speed, but I think he's got a future in the NFL. It's a tough possession receiver. He can catch the ball and run with it. He has extremely good balance. And he's a punt returner, too, which always helps. Versatility, the key to his game. First and 10, Walwork on the slant to Sexton. He's a good receiver. Sexton with another first down at the 24-yard line, picking up 15 yards. The Cowboys marching on right now. Well, this team just woke up all of a sudden, didn't it? They, they sure the did. Turnover for a touchdown. Sexton split out wide as a wide receiver. No backs in the backfield. He cuts in front of Chris Ellison on the slant in. But again, when you spread an offense across the field, see how far out his split is? He's almost to the sideline. You're spreading the defense out, and that's what creates these passing lanes. 
And that's what this team does so well in their passing game. First and 10 from the 24, 943 remaining in the third quarter. Wyoming playing for its bowl life. Sexton between the tackles down to the 16-yard line. Sexton's a guy who in 1995 was converted to a running back from a defensive back, and it's a move that the coaches feel was a good one for him and for the team. It's paid off. Muirbrook making the tackle along with Hale. Looks like he got hurt there. He's a J.C. transfer himself from Northeastern Oklahoma. He's recruited out of high school by a lot of colleges, but he was academically deficient. He went to junior college, got his grades in order. Now he's at Wyoming playing very good football. He's out of the game. Brigham in for him on second and two. Marcus Brigham with another Wyoming first down at the 12-yard line. Move the chains. I'll tell you, this offensive line's done a good job today in pass protection most of the day. But they're also getting after it in a running game. Rob Rathbun right behind him, the big center. You know, he played in that game, number 53 did, against Colorado State. And I was sitting next to him at the banquet, and it was snowing, and the wind was going sideways in that game. And he said, I was a tough guy, wore a half a T-shirt. I said, I wound up with frostbite on my belly for a week. <laughs> Paid the price for showing that washboard off. That's huh? a big belly. He says, that's so much for the tough guy look. <laughs> Those offensive linemen like to show off that their muscles, their arms. Harris in motion. Here's Brigham. Weaving his way down to the nine-yard line is Marcus Brigham as Joe Tiller looks on. Brigham, as we mentioned, a little bigger than Sexton, more of a short yardage guy. Shifty, too. At 5'11", 206, just a sophomore, Sexton the senior. So Brigham will no doubt take over that starting job next year. Second down and seven. The nose of the ball at the nine-yard line. Wyoming trailing by six points. It's 13 to seven. Brigham out as a receiver right now. Harris, the middle receiver, to the top of your screen. And it's Harris. Catches it. His forward progress will be marked around the four-yard line. That's about two yards short of the first down. And that is a tough catch for a quarterback to make, uh, for a wide receiver to make. He knew he was going to get hit. I mean, he came into that slant pattern, and he knew that once he slanted inside, there were people waiting for him. Watch Harris is going to slant inside here. Now, just watch the people waiting for him in the middle of the field. Free safety comes inside. There's three people waiting for him. You still got to catch the football and say, I'm going to get hit. There's nothing I can do about it. He came out of that pile blinking. I think he got a finger in the eye, yeah. Third down and two. Brigham, not sure he made it. Don't think that he made it. Spencer Reed, number 41, the strong side linebacker making the tackle. You know, and when you run a no tight end offense, sometimes a no back offense, a one back offense with three, four wide receivers, this is your Achilles heel in the offense when you have to tighten up the formation and try and get one or two yards in the rushing game. BYU just outplanked the formation and brought more people. And subsequently, stuffing the run, Riedel coming in for a field goal attempt from 20 yards out. He missed earlier from 45. This one, a chip shot. And the Cowboys come three points closer to BYU. It's 13 to 10. Walwork has been a different quarterback this half. We'll be right back. Has he done all his chores? Put all his things away? Has he been a good boy this year? Well, maybe he deserves a shiny new toy this Christmas. And maybe we can help you find just the right one at the True Value Christmas is Just Around the Corner sale. Get this three-drawer master mechanic tool chest for only $149. It comes with all these brand-name tools. True Value Christmas is Just Around the Corner.
Ford Escort. It's new and it's nifty. It's made for the smart, the intelligent thrifty. It's new out and in, has airbags for two. Even anti-lock brakes are available. Ooh, the trunk, it is huge to hold tremendous treasure. And if your treasure is of stupendous measure, the rear seat folds down to let bigger things in, still leaving room for your next of kin's kin. It has all the what's-its and gidgets, to put it concisely, and Escort's right price should suit you quite nicely. The tattoo reads, no fear. Wyoming, fearless on that last drive. Paying off with a field goal, they trail by three points with 6.27 to play in the third quarter. Steve Sarkeesian will get a crack next for BYU on offense. A win for the Cougars in this game. They increase their chances of getting an at-large berth to the bowl alliance. Corey Weedle kicking off from the 35. And that is Ronnie Jenkins, number 16, for the Cougars. Instead, it's James Dye. P2, extremely dangerous. Dye contained at the 19-yard line. Hey, coming up next, the number four-ranked Florida Gators battle Alabama in the Georgia Dome. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. That's coming up next. And Steve Spurrier's crew, you know, was jumping for joy after Texas defeated Nebraska. Because Florida stands a chance at getting another shot at Florida State in the Sugar Bowl, the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And again, you'll see on ABC. A rematch of that great game they had two years ago. This fifth quarter. A shootout in the desert. Well, not quite a shootout at 13-10. It's not what we expected, but competitive nonetheless. First and 10. McKenzie stuffed up at the 22-yard line. The WAC Championship on ABC Sports brought to you by the all-new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. We're here to sold out Sam Boyd Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. In the shadows of the Rockies, BYU leads Wyoming 13 to 10. It's second down and nine from the Cougars 21 yard line. Two back set, Johnson and McKenzie out of the eye. Sarkeesian and the play is blown up at the 10 yard line. Number 42, Jay Jenkins coming on the blitz. The fourth sack of the day for the Cowboys. He's the guy that had the fumble recovery for a touchdown. He's playing a lot of football in that backfield for BYU today. This play takes a long time. They're trying to set up a screen to the right side. It has no chance against the play action. It's when Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator, calls the right blitz at the right time, and they catch BYU. You know what, John? This doesn't look like a defense that gave up 447 yards per game this year. Texas, huge win over Nebraska earlier on ABC. Third and 17 for Sarkeesian. Underneath incomplete for Johnson. They'll have to punt again. And there's no question that the Wyoming defense has got this team back in the game and the momentum of this football game Lavelle Edwards knows this has completely shifted. Brock Spack is very happy about the way his defense is played. Somehow BYU has to figure out a way to recapture the momentum. Sarkeesian in the offensive unit off the field. Yeah, only eight yards in this uh, second half so far for BYU. On their last possession, Sarkeesian was hit and fumbled the ball. Wyoming rang it in for a touchdown. Here's Boardman punting again. Harris is standing on his own 40-yard line. grabs it runs out of bounds at the 41 yard line a 46 yard punt one on the return New Year's Day hey the party's in Pasadena join us for the granddaddy of them all the Rose Bowl undefeated second ranked Arizona State meets a rugged fifth ranked Ohio State then Thursday January 2nd live from the Superdome in Nolens college football's national championship is on the line in the Nokia Sugar Bowl the best bowls in college football are here on ABC Sports that's at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific and who's it going to be? Maybe BYU against Florida State? Maybe Florida against Florida State? <laughs> well, that's the nice thing about the Rose Bowl. At least we know who's playing yes. in the thing. It's going to be interesting to see how Ohio State rebounds from their loss against Michigan. 4.47 remaining in the quarter. Here's Sexton. Sexton the ball out to the 44-yard line. He'll have about three on the play. It'll be second down 
in about seven. Sexton out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. And Tim Duncan leading the way. Wake Forest wins. Boy, Mike Bibby's a heck of a player for Arizona. Son of Henry and Villanova beating St. John's in a Big East battle. 4-16 to play in the period. A look at the countenance of the quarterback. Jay Walwork on second down and seven. Has time. A lot of contact, but no flags on the play. Number two is Richard Peace, who is being covered closely by Tim McTire, number 21. That was a three-level pass pattern from three receivers on the outside. The inside receiver was shallow. The second receiver was deeper. Wal Walwork went to all three levels and tried to go to the deepest level, but everybody was well covered. Jay Walwork, in the last game they played against Colorado State, you know, he didn't pass for a touchdown in the game for the first time in his career. And hasn't passed for one today so far. Third down and seven for Wyoming. the slant piece makes the catch but he's about a yard and a half short of the first down right near midfield piece number two making the catch tackled by Muirbrook number 46 piece a nice compliment to Marcus Harris in the receiving core but they're shy of the first down they'll punt Well, certainly the Cowboys feel they can use that slam pattern, but this time Muirbrook has read the pattern real well, got over there on the wide receiver, Richard Pierce, to keep him from getting the first out. I thought he had a chance of making it there for a second. There's a look at James Dye, number six, back to retrieve this punt. There's a man who watches tons of videotape. Oh, he, well, he is <laughs> the biggest fan of college football I've ever met. Ditto for me. I mean, he has two VCRs going every Saturday for about the last 15 years taping college football games. He says, and, and he knows every player. He, like you said, he knows all the announce crews. He knows the announce crews. <laughs> he knows what we've said. He knows what we've fa failed to say. <laughs> James Dye. What, what a delightful guy to be around. He, to me, embodies all that's good about college football. It's just a delight to be around. That ball foul. Delay a game. Five-yard penalty gets the offense. Remains fourth down. Went to Utah State, James Dye did. Then he took a year off. Then he transferred to BYU after a year of junior college. And, you know, he loves it at BYU. He said, I'm not a real good student, and I need to be pushed, and that's what I'm getting here, a good environment in which to get my college degree. Met his wife when she gave him a ride to school. Mama said, don't pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> Got to be careful. Could end up getting married, right? This punt over Dye's head into the end zone, and BYU will start off on its own 20-yard line. Let's go back to John Saunders in New York. Mark, it's time for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day, and it's a great one. Fourth and in inches, John Makovic goes for it. James Brown to Derek Lewis, as everyone thought it was going to be a running play. He goes 60 yards and sets up a Priest-Holmes touchdown. So on the gamble, Texas holds off Nebraska 37-27. Mark. Man, I'm telling you, John, if John Makovic rolled the dice oh, he did. today in Vegas, uh, he'd come up to, with some good numbers. After the loss to Notre Dame late in the game and the loss to Oklahoma in overtime, he left himself open for some major second-guessing with that call. On first and ten, here's BYU with a three-point lead. Ronnie Jenkins brought down for a loss on the play. At the 15-yard line, Jeff Leonard making the stop. This Wyoming defense has turned up the intensity meter here in the second half. They've undergone a facelift in attitude and approach. Jenkins coming out of the ball game, McKenzie coming in for him. It's second down and 15 after that loss of five. BYU now in consecutive series has lost yardage. It's going to make it that much more difficult for them to convert the first down. There's a lot of maturity on that BYU cast. Yalalua completed the 19-yard line. And speaking of maturity, here's Dean Blevins. Dean? Well, guys, you know, looking at doing some homework on this game, it, uh, a number really jumps out at you. BYU offensively, the 
average age of the players 23.3 years of age now that seems really old but when you compare their average age of their 2 deep roster to Wyoming unbelievably it's, it's, it's the exact same 22.9 years of age yeah the you know, perception is uh, that BYU players are mu often much older but yeah because they go off for those two-year missions you're right I you know they do have some players who are 25 26 years old in their lineup Dean doing a little bit of math, covering a nice number. <laughs> Third and ten. Johnson brought down at the 25, five yards short of the first down. Talich on the stop. Sarkeesian and the offense go to the sidelines one more time. They'll have to punt. Jim Talich lined up all the way on the inside. Now, he's not known for his ability to cover in the pass. But once he makes a decision and he comes over and cuts everything off, and again, keep in mind, they're five yards short here right now of the first down. It's fourth and five, and it's because they lost yardage on first down. This is really hurting the BYU offense. Lavelle Edwards looking for a solution. Boardman punting. Averaging 42.1 coming into this contest. Marcus Harris standing on his own 30. Wow, that is a punt. Back at the 16, Harris. A clip on the play. And Boardman really, I'm, man, anything in the air that long should have a flight attendant on it. And a movie, too. <laughs> a 60-yard punt, two yards on the return. And Boardman getting some love from his teammates. Deservingly so. One more look. Yeah, right here, Kelly Pratt coming to downfield. Watch the, he gets a push and a clip in the back. And that's what's called by the officials. Boy, that flag came out quickly, didn't it? And <laughs> look at him with his hands up. Saying, I, I didn't do that. <laughs> you don't do it right in front of the official. <laughs> Bill McCabe with the call. And folks, Monday on NBC's NFL Monday Night Football, Kansas City against Oakland, a great old-time rivalry at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Some of the names in that rivalry reads like a who's who of, of uh, football. Lanier, Marv Hubbard, Litnikoff, Hank Scram. Great rival, Monday night. So they'll bring this back, and the ball will be placed deep in Wyoming territory. Look at BYU in the second half, just 13 yards now, total offense in the second half. We have 31 seconds left in the third quarter, so it's hard to believe that they've been shut down, but this, certainly this momentum has shifted. If not for the strength of their punter, Alan Boardman, they'd be in a lot worse shape right now. This has been a quickly played game, and Brent Musburger, if you're listening, he said the thought he was going to take the over on the four-hour time <laughs> limit of this game. I think it'll be well under. Five receivers, they go empty on this play on first and ten from the eight. Well, Waller pointed, pointed something out to the officials, and now there's a delay on the field. And now they're going to... Thank you the play clock, yeah, set at five seconds. BYU Cougars, of course, playing for an at-large berth. The Bowl Alliance with a win today, their chances increase. Wyoming, if they win, they go to either the Holiday or the Cotton Bowl. A loss, they could be shut out altogether. First and ten from the seven for Wyoming. Waller gets rid of it quickly. The three-step drop, and it's incomplete. Intended for Sarah. Yeah, that's Bloomfield, though. Bloomfield, who is the best defensive lineman for BYU, prevented Walworth from stepping into that pass. Number 91, Henry Bloomfield, just working right over the center, and he just penetrates between the center and guard. Neither player could really get any kind of good positioning on him. Four seconds, please. And they're trying to set now the game clock, I believe, at 24 seconds. It was at 22. So they have a little clock problem here. You know, they, they don't have they don't have clocks in Las Vegas, so maybe that's part of the problem, you know. The casinos don't have clocks. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Wall work. Completed the 13-yard line. Stops the clock with 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. 
Saroff making the catch. Saroff's an interesting story. He was born in Iran, and his parents fled during the 1979 revolution there and settled in Westwood, California. He was five years old at the time, and uh, he's affectionately known as Hollywood to his teammates. Well, you know, he was a teammate, too, of Steve Sarkeesian at El Camino, uh, El Camino Junior College. And last year, his coach Joe Tiller said, I think he pressed a little bit. He wanted to impress Sarkeesian, his, his ex-teammate, and did not play well. Five yards to go on third down. The pass complete. First down and then some to Montgomery. Has the first down, stops the clock with 10 seconds to play in the period. A 22-yard pickup. And Joe Tiller's team offensively moving the ball here in the second half. Yeah, this is a good changeup. We've seen so many slant ends from that three wide receiver set on that side of the football field. This time, Wendell Montgomery runs about 10 yards downfield, looks like he's going to slant over the middle, and then breaks back outside. And he's the heir apparent to Marcus Harris here at Wyoming. But, of course, we've got to figure out what kind of offense they're going to run in the future with a new head coach. New cast coming in next year. They go empty again. Quarterback draw, Walwick. Not the fastest quarterback in the world, but he picks up about seven yards. Oh, he's tough, though, isn't he? Ooh. Put his hat down into the pile. Well, that's the end of the third quarter of play. We'll return with more action between Wyoming and BYU after this message and a word from our ABC stations. My name is John Anderson, born in 1914. My age is 90. George Hartman, I'm 101. As we approach our 100th anniversary, we honor those who worked at the side of Henry Ford. Their spirit and commitment to quality lives on in every man and woman of today's Ford Motor Company. Across America, computers are changing people's lives, and one company is changing the way people buy them. CompUSA. With over 5,000 computer products at everyday low prices, and friendly, knowledgeable salespeople to help you find everything you need. Which is why more Americans buy computers at CompUSA than ever before. We're everything you're looking for. We're CompUSA. It's eerie. How do you explain the ectoplasm and goo in the bathroom? When there's a ghost in the schoolhouse, who are you going to call? <laughs> An all-new Dangerous Minds, ABC Monday. You did your job. You did it well. You gave your all and it was swell. Time of your life. Stanley Steamer makes you feel right, feel right at home. It's that time of year again. The holidays have a way of bringing everyone together. You'll need to get ready for them and clean up after them. Call Stanley Steamer Carpet Cleaner today and ask about our $49.95 holiday special. We'll clean your carpet and upholstery so you can make better use of your time during and after the holidays. Stanley Steamer. We'll make you feel right at home for the holidays. Bob Opsall and Marla Weech, tonight at 6 p.m. on Channel 9. BYU leading by three as we begin the fourth quarter of play here in the land where Lady Luck is the most courted woman around. The land of chance, Las Vegas, Nevada, and the inaugural WAC championship game. BYU leading by three. Wyoming with the ball on second and two, and that was Brigham on the carry. Close to the first down. It's been an emotional ride for Wyoming over the last three weeks. Coach will leave for Purdue next year. 
Speaking of coaches, down to Dean. Well, Mark, it's actually been a very emotional year all season long because in February, offensive coordinator Larry Corpitz was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And the doctors told him, they took most of the tumor out. They said, you have two to three years to live. Now, he told me yesterday that he immediately took care of important business as his family took it as well as he possibly could. He's a tough guy, told the team not to let this be a battle or, or let, it, let his battle become a distraction. But a, uh, he believes an amazing recovery is taking place. He said he's part of a cancer research program with doctors up in Denver. And he's taking some 20 chemotherapy pills a day. And he says now he believes he will live 30 more years. So obviously we're all pulling for him. He has a cyst that they discovered on, on his brain, and they'll go in and check that out next week. And one footnote to it, of course, as you've mentioned, he's part of the group going to Purdue with Tiller, but he told me he was extremely disappointed not to get the head coaching job here. And he said he was told it was because of his condition, and he fully understood. Yeah, interesting story. A poignant one, too, Dean, on third down and one for the Cowboys now. BYU loading up at the line. Movement, flag down, break them down, right near the first down marker. Chris Ellison making the tackle, but the Cougars appeared to jump offside. We'll wait and see for the official call. Sure, look that way. Ed Lamb, who's lined up on the right side of the defense, jumped offside. It was clearly in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. Bill McCabe, the official today. Let's see if they get the number right. <laughs> That's been an adventure for them today. <laughs> and for us. Well, it's against BYU any way you look at it. That'll be an automatic first down. Yeah, 44 right at the bottom of your screen there. He's going to flash the worst here and way, way into that neutral zone. Beyond the neutral zone, if there is such a thing. How, long is, how far is that neutral zone anyway? <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, it's a width of the football. That's right. <laughs> Well, tomorrow on ABC Sports, we kick off our college basketball season. Payne Weber College Basketball, undefeated Michigan against Coach K's gang, Maryland, and California in other regional action. 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific time on ABC. Mike Krzyzewski with another competitive group down in Durham, North Carolina. New coach at Cal. First and 10 for Walworth. Going up top for Marcus Harris. Did he get in bounds? He yes, did. he did at wow. the 21-yard line. They stretched the defense downfield to pick up 30 yards and a first down. Tim McTire beaten on the play. But look how Walker has just come alive. And what a great job by Harris giving himself room. Watch how he leaves himself room so that if he does have to go back outside to the sideline, he doesn't run out of bounds. And yes, that right foot was down just before he made that catch in front of Tim McTire. Harris now six catches, 118 yards on the day. And folks, I want to remind you about something. Josh Walwork and Marcus Harris, their offense four times this year has come from behind in the fourth quarter to win games. BYU blitzing, Brigham running up the middle. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage, if that. Marcus Harris, number 23, the premier receiver in the country. Look at his numbers dating back to 1994. This guy is a monument to consistency. Look at the totals. Oh, he sure is. And, and keep in mind, you know, with the, the 4,400 yards career-wise, his freshman year, he only caught one pass for 14 yards. Amazing. But as you said, consistent, Mark, through those last three years, and he's the only receiver to have three consecutive 1,400-yard years. Second and 10, wide open. Zaroth with a first down at the seven-yard line. Working on McTire again. A 14-yard pickup, and it'll be first and goal for the Cowpokes. David Zaroth from Beverly Hills, California, from Rodeo Drive to the Rodeo with the <laughs> Cowboys coming alive in this game. It's the second reception. Boy, he was wide open, too. That's the play that Harris had been running previously, and now Saroff is able to get behind that secondary into the corner. Saroff, a great compliment to number 23, Marcus Harris. Joe Tiller with a mouthful on the sidelines. Brigham, the lone back, trips to the left. Harris, the middle receiver. A waggle. Wall work into the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> Wyoming. Saroff. It was tipped and he hung on. How about that?
that? How about that? How this team has come back and see Shea Muirbrook pointing to himself, saying he was the guilty guy. Initially, the quarterback wants to go to Kuhn on the right side. You see him covered. He throws it back. Muirbrook gets a hand on it and actually tips it in the direction of Saraf. I mean, that was like a hockey play where you tip the puck into the net. Incredible concentration by Saraf. Weedle with the extra point is good. And for the first time this afternoon in this inaugural WAC championship game, Wyoming has the lead. David Seurat kept his eyes on the prize, and the Cowboys have the lead. I blame my father's death on the thin rope. My grandfather's too. In the tightrope walking, wider rope is more stable. The crowds though. They want thin, but I tell you, wider is better. Introducing the new Wide Track Grand Prix. Its wheels are set wide for better balance, tighter grip. I tell you from experience, più largo e meglio. The new Wide Track Grand Prix from Pontiac. Wider is better. Go for the gold. The new Rebel G. Get the ultimate rush. The Panasonic Razor. Shave wet or shave dry. Your choice. Your shave. Rinse clean. Work hard. Play hard. Shave your way. Panasonic. Freshness hotline. What's the problem? Man, my party is lame. I think I got some skunky beer. Sir, relax. When was your beer born? Born? What are you talking about? It doesn't have a born on date? A what? Do you have any Budweiser? No, man, you gotta help me. Okay, remain calm, sir. We're on our way. New born on dating from Budweiser, because fresh beer tastes better. Go, 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 go. Sir, put down the skunky beer and slowly back away. Attention all video watchers, for your viewing pleasure, we have plenty of new and never-before-seen videos, like this one. Ooh. Don't miss your chance at a full hour of America's Funniest Home Videos, ABC Sunday. David Saraf of Wyoming caught a touchdown pass moments ago. Steve Sarkeesian, his former teammate at El Camino Junior College in California. Some bragging rights at stake, maybe, between those two friends, huh? Yes, there are. Saraf came alive in that drive with two key receptions. Last year, he did not play well in that series. He played very well as Wyoming finally takes the lead in this football game. Weedle to kick off. This is Ronnie Jenkins. Jenkins, shifty and smooth, out to the 32. Time permitting, folks, stay tuned for the thrifty post postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. BYU offensively, John, has been very stagnant of late. A look at their possessions in the second half. The fumble resulted in a touchdown for Wyoming. And there was three and out consecutive punts. You know, the other thing about this game that's turned is that BYU has not rushed the football effectively at all. A negative 12 yards rushing in the second half. Sarkeesian. Going up top, has a man, Johnson, and he couldn't squeeze oh, it. Dustin Johnson was wide open. Sarkeesian laid it in there, but he couldn't squeeze it. It'll be second and ten. Dustin Johnson's been catching a lot of little flat patterns and things like that. Today's isolated right here on 94. Jim Talley, so he's working downfield. And he closes in on the football. He's wide open, and he just lets the ball slip out over his hands. Doesn't seem to get his hands around the football in time. Got right through there, hit off his shoulder pad. But that was a play that you know BYU was saving, getting that isolation, because they've been running a lot of short patterns so far in this game. They try and go deep one-on-one -on, -one on Talich, and he drops the ball. Yeah, when you use a play like that, you want to take advantage. That time they couldn't, though. Sarkeesian, under pressure, throws behind his intended receiver. Chad Lewis, the tight end. It'll be third down and 10 for BYU. And you wonder at this point, throwing to Chad Lewis, how much they miss at Tula Mealy in this game. Number 88, the tight end got hurt. It sounds like he has torn ligaments. He's going to be out for quite some time, but he's a big part of this offense. 
They like to run their two tight end sets, and Sarkeesian has not played well in the second half. Four of eight, just 25 yards. I think they miss it to Lamele. They sure do. For those of you joining us late, Mealy suffering a knee injury in the first quarter of the game. Third down and ten for the Cougars. Sarkeesian checking. Throwing. Incomplete. At the 45, they'll have to punt again. Brent Liu, number 89 for the Cowboys, laid a hit on Sarkeesian as he released it. That pocket just collapsed inside. Sarkeesian, look at how things just closing around him. As you said, Brent Liu got him, but a lot of that is just coverage downfield. Even when he released that football, he had nobody open. John, this is the fourth time in a row that the Cougar offense has gone one, two, three punts. Frustration for Steve Sarkeesian. Boardman punting. Harris at the 22. Looking for the wall. He had a wave of blockers down that left side, and he's brought down to the 32. The Cowboys lead by four when we return. cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics and the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. The engineers of the Pontiac Grand Am design cars for people who get a kick out of driving, complete with a powertrain built to precise aerospace tolerances. And that's kept more Grand Ams tearing along even after 11 years than any car in its class. So buy a Grand Am for a good time. Have it around for a good long time. Grand Am, built for kicks, built for keeps. Starting around 15-2. The WAC Championship on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the one thing to wear for every sport. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Burger King, where you can get your burger's worth. A look at Las Vegas Boulevard on the Strip. I want to say hello to our friends at the Barrage Hotel and the MGM Grand, in particular, Dan London. That's not, that's Manhattan, isn't it? That's not <laughs> Las Vegas. A reasonable facsimile. Well, wall work has been the real thing here in the quarter. And as I say that, he's picked off by number one, Omar Morgan. His third interception of the day. You know, Mark, I honestly think there were two receivers in that vicinity, and I think each one expected the other one to catch that football. Omar Morgan made a decision for both of them, and he went and intercepted that ball. An incredible turn of events for Josh Walwork, who was having a fantastic second half. Up to that point, it was 9 for 12, 140 yards and a touchdown. Disappointment written all over his face. And now the sellout crowd of over 41,000, the highest attendance of a team sporting event in the state of Las Vegas. Witnessing this game, the crowd making some noise, in particular, the Cougar fans. Sarkeesian's going to pass. Tight end's wide open. And he hits him. Chad Lewis at the 35. 25. Lewis corralled finally at the 13-yard line by Chuck Polson. He picks up 30 yards and a Cougar first down. Well, when you're struggling as a quarterback, it's nice to have a blown coverage. Number 96, Chad Lewis is wide open. 
nobody covering him at all. Look at him. Nobody around him at all. He catches the football and makes some big yards afterwards. For some reason, he was not accounted for by the coverage of that Wyoming secondary. Chad Lewis, an academic All-American, All-Conference, great athlete, a former 6-foot, 10-inch high jumper. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. Out of the backfield, number 22, Atiura. Down to the 14-yard line, tackled by Brian Lee, the strong safety. Atuaya, teammate of Itula Mealy. Good protection on the left side. It's John Tate, number 75, doing a great job. He's a redshirt freshman. I was talking to him the other day after practice. He goes, you know, I don't know a whole lot. I'm just a redshirt freshman, but this sure is a long season. <laughs> BYU, after playing in a bowl game, will play it in 15 games this year. That's almost an NFL regular season schedule. It's a long grind for sure. 11 and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Sarkeesian has time into the end zone. Touchdown, Lewis. The Cougars will take the lead. <laughs> Chad Lewis get a pat on the head from Steve Sarkeesian, working one-on-one. -on -one. Looks like he's with Jay Jenkins, number 42, the linebacker. Does he get a good jam at the line of scrimmage? Lewis takes his time and sells that post move. Breaks out into the corner, and he's wide open for the touchdown. Hotchman with the extra point. It's good. It's 20-17, to 17, BYU leading. Lewis, a communication major, getting his point across that time. The Cougars lead. When my grandfather served the Bonsai Pipeline, narrow boards ruled. Eventually, Gramps had a stroke of genius, a wider board for better control. I aho la ula, he said. Wider is better. Introducing the new Wide Track Grand Prix. Its wheels are set wide to hold the road for more control when you're shooting the curves. It's true. I aho la ula, the new Wide Track Grand Prix from Pontiac. Wider is better. Silver bullet, it's shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! The new Coors Light wide mouth can is here with a giant opening for a smoother pour. Here's something I want you to think about. Discus Athletic. Athletic were made for whatever you like to do. Like biking, football, and for you Europeans, football. One brand for every sport. You can't say that about these outfits. My, the unitard. That is special. Unnecessary spending. 20 yards. So, no matter what your game, choose Discus Athletic. One thing to wear. But pick your colors carefully. BYU now on top of Wyoming, 20 to 17. Dean Blevins with you. And did you know 32 BYU players are married? Number 32, the wife is number 32, Don Johnson. And Dustin's your husband. What's it like being married in the season for him? Well, people think it gets in the way, but it doesn't. I keep him on, on the ball because I make sure he goes to bed on time, make sure he takes his protein shakes and all his creatine and all his vitamins and whatever. So. I keep his priorities straight. All right, and guys, she knows a little bit about sports. She was in the U.S. Olympic trials, a developmental event, actually, in the hammer throw. All-American here. Athletic Flamley. Brigham watches it bounce through the back of the end zone. And, folks, stick around, because after this one, the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper, the Florida Gators, and Elijah Williams against the Alabama Crimson Tide and Dennis Riddle. Gene Stallings last season as head coach for Alabama and Florida with a chance to get back in the Sugar Bowl. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, the game you'll see on ABC. Yeah, the rumors coming out of there, Mike DuBose could be the replacement for Gene Stallings. No announcements been made. The mobile register reported that and they 
Announcement's going to be made on Monday, actually, to Gene Stallings' replacement. He has done a wonderful job down at Alabama. Josh Walworth looking for a little more comeback magic. He's done it in the past. His team trails by three with 11.28 to play in the fourth. Walworth wide open. Peace. Still on the loose. Still on his feet. <laughs> Richard Peace. <laughs> That's a man running tall. He broke three tackles, picking up 66 yards. And I've watched Richard Peace the last couple weeks in their games, their last two football games, and he's a guy that loves to play physical football. He likes to crack down on blocks. He's wide open. Waller gets enough time to finally identify him, but just watch the run after the catch. I mean, here's a guy who doesn't care how many people are trying to tackle him. He's just going to keep on. Look at him punish that one tackler. He ran right over Lane Hale, number 25 of BYU. There. Yeah, right there, Lane Hale, 25. And Lane Hale likes to hit people, too. He was getting after it in the last game against Utah. Got called for some personal fouls. So, Peace, wow, brings Cowboys back into this game right away, doesn't he? Sure did. Wall work now on the quarterback draw. Falling forward to the 13-yard line. Not sure whether that was a designed play or not. I don't know if you want him running the football that much. You know, he's got little bird legs. I saw him on the practice field with his shorts, and he's got very skinny legs. He's not that big of a kid at all. Look at the quarterback comparison to date so far. Walworth completing half of his passes. Sarkeesian well over half, 17 to 24. But Walworth with three interceptions today, all three of them leading to scores. Two led to a field goal each, and the third led to that last BYU touchdown. Yeah, 13 points off of turnovers, and... That's been the difference in this game for the Cowboys. You're right. Shea Muirbrook, the injured BYU player on the field from Norco, California. There's a guy on the field who's not afraid to let his teammates know how he feels. He became a captain this year and became a lot more outspoken as the respect of each and every one of his teammates. Muirbrook saying, let go of me. I'm not getting off the field. Now he's got to take at least one play off. Well, a celebration of the cream of the crop in college football. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit announced the winner of the coveted Heisman Trophy live from the Downtown Athletic Club in New York City next Saturday at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, only on ESPN. The other half of our Disney family, one big happy family. 10.30 to play. Wyoming trailing flags down. Here's the call from Bill McCabe. Well, the just got... Both start. Number 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty to the main second down. If you're Wyoming, you hate to implode this deep in BYU territory. It'll set up second down and 15 with 10.27 to play in the fourth quarter. The nose of the ball now at the 19-yard line. Joe Tiller on the left. Lavelle Edwards on the right. Couldn't really tell which was the leading coach on the scoreboard. Patola, the lone back, four wideouts out of the play for the Cowboys. More motion up front. Flag down at the 20. The pass is incomplete, intended for peace. Well, it looks like he got the yards back. <laughs> Using that hard count once again. It's an aggressive front for BYU, but it seemed clearly a couple people had moved off sides and were in the neutral zone. Yeah, this one does go against BYU, so he does get the yardage back, in fact. Wyoming trailing by three points, and as I mentioned moments ago, four different times this season, they've come from behind to win it in the fourth quarter. In fact, Walwork led a John Elway-like 96-yard drive for a touchdown against Colorado State in the 25-24 win back on November the 16th, the last time they played. He was six for eight on that drive, so he is accustomed to pressure pack situations. Here facing second and 10, the quick toss to Sexton. Chopped down at the 14-yard line. Lane Hale, the hard-hitting strong safety, making the tackle for BYU. So they just try and get the ball. They have Sexton lined up to the right, and they try to out-quick the defense by just pitching the ball to Sexton. 
See where Sexton's lined up number 12. Now, they just scooted out to him real fast. They feel like he's got the speed to run past people to the sideline. Ed Keel running him down, and Chris Ellison getting off a block to make the tackle. So it did not work that time. That was the play, actually, that Marcus Harris was lobbying for. He said, hey, get a pitch to me if, if I'm going to line up in the backfield for this game. And it's third and ten. Harris split wide to the bottom of the screen. Walworth goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys! Seraf! Well, Marcus Harris may be the leading receiver in the history of this game, but David Seraf is making the plays in this football game, working one-on-one. -on -one. Now, he's got the mismatch with the safety on him. That's Ben Cook, number 30. But I was impressed. Josh Walwick threw that football almost flat on his back. There was so much pressure on the middle. And another lead change. Wyoming fumbles the extra point. They'll have to look into the end zone. <laughs> it's complete. And it counts. They get the deuce. <laughs> Corey Weedle. Weedle with a heads-up play. He never saw any footage of Gallia Premium, that's for sure. <laughs> Aaron Langley is the holder. He's the punter. He drops the football. Might have been a little outside. Now, this is just a scramble play. But there's a great pass on the two-point conversion. In the land where Lady Luck shines bright, right now Lady Luck shining on the Cowboys. Wrangler jeans. Available in the two colors boys prefer most. Black and blue. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. The new IBM Aptiva at Radio Shack with 3D games, 3D internet, and home director. It's no ordinary computer. No ordinary computer can make your home look lived in. No ordinary computer is as thoughtful and so nice to come home to. And the IBM Aptiva with Home Director is only available at Radio Shack. It's no ordinary computer. And with special financing, it's no ordinary deal. Radio Shack. You've got questions. We've got answers. The engineers at the Pontiac Grand Am design cars for people who get a kick out of driving complete with a powertrain built to precise aerospace tolerances. And that's kept more Grand Dams tearing along even after 11 years than any car in its class. So buy a Grand Dam for a good time. Have it around for a good long time. Grand Dam. Built for kicks, built for keeps. Starting around 15-2. Well, the guy sitting down, number one on the bench for Wyoming, grew up on Rodeo Drive in Hollywood, California. Right now, he's the man on Las Vegas Boulevard. He gave Wyoming a 25-20 lead that they hold right now. David Seraf may be the most valuable player for Wyoming so far today. Here's Weedle's kick. Jenkins at the five. Still on his feet. Jenkins brought down at the 27-yard line, a 22-yard return. Coming up next on ABC, it's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Number 15, Alabama, against Steve Spurrier's Florida Gators, who now have an opportunity to get to the Sugar Bowl and take on Florida State in a rematch. Well, you think Danny Werfel got that ice bag off in time for this game? He was knocked down 32 times by Florida State. Boy. And, of course, BYU is still in the hunt for an at-large Alliance Bowl bid. Wow, look at that. 248 yards in the second half for Wyoming. They did wake up. BYU with just 57. That was that whole drive with Chad Lewis on his touchdown reception. 9-16 to play in the fourth quarter. First and 10 for the Cougars. Sarkeesian incomplete. He had Jenkins matched up against a linebacker, number 36, Chuck Polson. It'll be second down and 10. You know, one thing about Sarkeesian, there's always been a line of succession in quarterbacks here at BYU over the years. Gifford Nielsen, 
Steve Young, Ty Detmer, John Wall, some of the names that have come through here, Mark Wilson. And he came in as a JC transfer. He actually had a baseball scholarship to USC. And then he left that school. Norm Chow talking to K.O. Kialului. But Steve Sarkeesian had a baseball scholarship to USC. He left the school. Then he went to El Camino JC. And then he came here and started right out of the JC uh, program. Here he is back to pass on second down. Sarkeesian on the move. Completes it to number 22, Atuaya. And he is brought down to the 38-yard line, an 11-yard pickup, and a first down for the Cougars. So Sarkeesian with an education in improvisation that time. Stuart Hansen making the tackle on the play. 9-12 to play in the fourth quarter. And it's a player shaken up on the play. It's Hansen. Well, you know, Sarkeesian, when he came in out of junior college, he took over for John Walsh, who left early after his junior year, and it left this program in lurch. They didn't have a quarterback. He played last year, they were 7-5, and five, and he took a lot of pressure. He did not play real well. He certainly has improved his performance this year. He and Walsh, very good friends. That's how he knew Walsh was leaving early. And decided to come to BYU. He goes up top. This time, Dustin Johnson squeezes it. Last time, on that same play, he dropped the ball when he was wide open. He beat Brian Lee for the 23-yard pickup and another Cougar first down. And that's what I like about Norm Chow and the simplicity of what he does offensively. If something works, there's a Tula Mealy to his right there on the crutches, the tight end who was hurt in the first quarter. But if something works, he's going to go back to it. You know, he's going to wait till the defense takes something away. That play was open before to Johnson. Johnson dropped the ball and he came back to it. And this time, Johnson atones for his mistake. John, you mentioned all those former BYU quarterbacks. Chow says that if they came back today, they could call the same plays because things haven't changed all that much. It's been the same offense for nearly 20 years now, Mark. Cougars trailing by five. Dustin Johnson tripped up by the shoelaces and falling at the 36-yard line. Tolich making the tackle. He's been a busy man this afternoon. You know, Tolich is a walk-on at this school. He has an academic scholarship to Wyoming. And boy, he just trips up Johnson on that play. Tolich, a first team, all wax selection. Second down and seven for the Cougars at the 36-yard line. Approaching eight minutes to play. Wyoming coming out of blitz, flags down. Sarkeesian went to hit the hot receiver number 80, McGuire, and he couldn't hang on to it. But we'll wait and sort these flags out. There was a lot of movement up front. And it's going to go against BYU. Well, it looked like the Cowboys faked the blitz. Talich came running up inside. An offensive lineman may have flinched. John, Wyoming's a team that likes to use those zone blitzes. Have you seen a lot of that today? I really haven't. No, I think they've been loading up primarily to stop the run. That's why they made some changes. Brock's back, the defensive coordinator. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the second down. There's a motion penalty called by the referee, but Brock's back. Wanted to stop the run first. He felt if he could stop the run first, then his defense could progress. We'll see if the tailback flinches here. Yeah, there's the tailback flinching, so that's the penalty that's called. But they want the defense to progress from stopping the run first, then the knocking down Sarkeesian and putting pressure on him. Out of the shotgun on second and 13. Johnson wide open. Nice move in the open field. Has the first down at the 23-yard line. Dustin Johnson, not known for his elusiveness, made a nice move in the open field to pick up 18 yards and a first down with 7.42 to play in the fourth quarter. I'll tell you, Johnson's been a major part of this offense today. He has seven catches for 68 yards, and I think a lot of the reason he's in there is because, again, Atula Mealy, who would be catching these kind of passes, has been taken out of the offense with the injuries. Typo McGuire coming out of the ball game. A look at Johnson's numbers today. Impressive. And he only had 23 receptions coming into the season. They blitz, and Johnson on the carry. And Johnson is bulldog. There's a fumble, and now they're going to rule that it was down first. Well, that's the official blowing it dead at the 20-yard line. Robbie Duncan made the hit on the play. Well, that's part of the rodeo right there, the way that football was ripped out. There's a rodeo in town, and that looked oh, like a rodeo. That was right a bulldog, there. John. See Duncan, number 22, coming in. 
You see if he rips the football out. Lee Vaughn is right there, number 30. So see if that knee's down before Vaughn pulls it out. I don't know if the knee made it down, but I think another part of his body did make it down. That's derriere. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll say it. All right. <laughs> Speak a little French. Second down and seven for the Cougars. Yalalu in motion. Backside pressure on the blitz, and they get to him. The fifth sack of the afternoon, Chuck Polson rising to the occasion today, getting the start. Polson, the understudy of Brian Brown, making a big play. Well, Sarkeesian never had a chance on this play. They're trying to get him with a little bit of a sprint action to the right side. That blitz came from the back side. He never had a chance to feel it, never had a chance to do anything about it. John, that sets up third down and 16. The ball is at the 27-yard line for BYU. And with under six minutes left, you got to start thinking about getting seven points instead of just kicking a field goal here if they don't convert, Mark. BYU playing for an at-large Alliance Bull berth. That's what's at stake. Under pressure, Sarkeesian complete. Atuaya down to the 13-yard line. Depending on the mark, it appears as if he is just a little bit shy of the first down. Brian Brown made the tackle on the play, number 13 right there. And it's going to be an interesting decision by Lavelle Edwards. Does he go for it on fourth down, or does he kick a field goal here? Sarkeesian looks like the decision's been made. He looked like he looked over and... He's shown him that there's not that many yards to go for, and the big tight end comes in, the 300-pounder, John Moala. Moala, you mentioned big, 300 pounds. John, when he sits on a dollar, dollar bill, blood comes out of George Washington's yeah. nose. <laughs> and Lavelle Edwards told me, yeah, he can afford to lose about 20 pounds. He is huge. They got the first down, McKenzie. And it's first and goal for the Cougars from the six. Brian McKenzie ran over the big side of that left-right line. Cox and Anderson and Moala as well. Actually, the defense stunts itself out of the play. You see the stun inside by number 90 at the top of the screen. They stunned themselves right out of the play. That's where defense guesses wrong and allows an offense to pick up some yardage. I mean, that was, that was simply... A defense that guessed wrong on that play. Nose of the ball at the six. On first and goal. McKenzie the lone back. It's McKenzie. Brought down to the three-yard line. Tackled by Tollich, number 94. It'll be second down and goal. In their last game, John, against Utah, BYU ran well between the tackles on that play. They did. It's nothing more than a zone play inside. They change up with a little bit of a trap once in a while. You know, it used to be that BYU threw the football and they ran a draw trap. And that was their running game, to draw a trap, because it came off a drop back motion by the quarterback. But now they do a lot of different things in the running game. Yeah, Edwards there on the sidelines telling us earlier, you know, hey, it's nice to have one of those good speedy backs. I like this. <laughs> Second and goal. Johnson in motion. McKenzie. Boy, tough sledding between the tackles. He's tackled at the two-yard line. It'll be third down and goal for BYU. A tackle made by who else? Number 94, Tolich. 319 to play in the fourth quarter. A field goal may not do BYU any good right now. The timeout situation, both teams with three remaining. This is the 12th play of the drive coming up. And you know what? We're going to catch our breath and think about it. We'll be right back. And a little dragon looked up to the moon with fire burning in his eyes. And he Why said, did he have fire in his eyes? Because he's a dragon. How come he's a dragon and not a dinosaur? Well, because... How big is How the little when you use your Visa card this holiday season, we'll make a donation to Reading is Fundamental. Together, we'll bring kids a million stories. Have I answered everybody's question? Why don't we get snacks? Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. You gotta have fire. Slapping, lapping, fancy flames, flicking chicken from every side. Until marinated bird and garlic and lime has turned from good into sublime. 
Oh, what is Chili's thus created? Why, it's margarita grilled chicken consummated. Served horizontally, grill marks up on a tostada with a lot of what your mouth waters for. That rib stickin' margarita grilled chicken. Cause Chili's grills like no place else. As long as this thing's been going, Check. we've been chasing it. It's an obsession with us. We, we've gone days without seeing anything. Stop it! Stop it! Yeah, over there. It's a woodchuck. Nothing, right? It's a woodchuck. It Sorry. keeps going and going, and therefore you yourself have to keep going and going. The Panasonic Razor. Shave wet or shave dry. Your choice. Your shave. Rinse clean. Work hard. Play hard. Shave your way. Panasonic. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnuolo and Dean Blevins. It's third and goal for the Cougars who trail by five against Wyoming. An at-large Alliance Bowl berth on the line for BYU right here, right now. Atuaya, the lone back. Kialalui in motion. Into the end zone, incomplete. The Cowboys hold on third and goal. It's fourth and goal now. That's a little pop fire pass. I saw him working on that in practice the other day. They try and get it to Chad Lewis, the tight end. Watch the contact. See if it comes. This little pop pass. See if it comes early. The hands are on him. Uh, I don't think you're going to call that with a tight end. You might call that with a wide receiver for pass interference. But you're not going to call just hands on somebody. Jay Jenkins in on the coverage, John, number 42. And it's fourth and goal from the two and a half yard line for Steve Sarkeesian. A defining moment for both these teams. Keala Louie in motion. Sarkeesian. He still has time. He's got to throw it and finally does. Incomplete. And the Cowboys hold and will take over on downs. Boy, how that defense was able to keep people covered throughout that entire sequence of seconds is beyond me, but somehow Sarkeesian was never able to find an open receiver. One player, though, Chad Lewis trying to work it. Now watch how open he is. This is on the back side, though. And he keeps trying to get the ball to him, trying to get the ball to him. And finally, as he tries to throw the ball across the field, Wyoming knocks the ball away. So it's great defense by the Cowboys. This is a story about a team, Wyoming, who's playing for respect. Make no doubt about it. They came in here with a slight chip on their shoulders. They felt that they have been slighted since they were named to play in this game. Everyone talked about BYU. Everyone talked about the fact that they were just a speed bump on the road to a bowl for the Cougars. Well, you know what? Somebody forgot to tell the Cowboys, folks, because they have a five-point lead with 2.46 to play in the fourth quarter. Sexton running at that time, getting a couple of yards. Bloomfield making the tackle. Both teams with timeouts remaining. Wyoming has three left. BYU has two remaining. The clock runs with 2.32 to play. And if they do win this game, they will go to either the Cotton Bowl or the Holiday Bowl. Cotton Bowl has the first choice. If they pass, the Holiday Bowl has to take the winner of the whack. Lavelle Edwards watching an at-large Alliance Bowl berth fall by the wayside right now. Sexton. Cowboys electing to keep it on the ground, maybe use a little clock. Sexton over the five to the six-yard line, tackled by Martin. A sellout crowd of over 41,000 people watching this inaugural WAC championship game. And BYU calls a timeout. They have one remaining. And look at the bowl possibilities. And I think you want to look at the bottom now. If Wyoming beats BYU, BYU goes to the Copper Bowl. Everybody in the alliance breathes a sigh of relief because you wind up with a team that we're saying is number five right now before the game with the Nebraska loss. You know, now they lose. They drop way down in the standings. And now you don't have a situation where you have to worry about the Alliance Bowl getting sued by the WAC. And, you know, the Western Athletic Conference had floated that idea around. They were going to sue the Alliance. And Wyoming now goes to the Holiday or the Cotton Bowl. And don't forget, folks, coming up next, it's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. And, John, 
what do you think Florida's thinking right now? They've seen Nebraska lose today. <laughs> yeah. And if the trend continues here, they would have seen BYU lose today, another right, favorite. Right. You know that they will be well prepared. Well, didn't all the coaches in the Big 12 vote against the conference championship game and all the presidents, with the exception yep. of one, voted for it? You know, so, you know, the coaches feel like they get through the regular season, that's fine. Then they go to the bowl games, but here you can have two major upsets in both of the conference championship games. And yeah, if I were Florida, I'd be thinking a little yep. bit right now. Call this day upset Saturday so far. Coming up next, the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper, Alabama against Florida. Third and seven, and Josh Wallwork says, you know what? I want to talk this one over with the brain trust. So the coaches will talk it over with the quarterback. And on the other side of the field, Lavelle Edwards, one of the all-time winningest active coaches in college football, pacing the sidelines. 226 victories. Some pretty good names in that bunch with them there, isn't it? And you know, uh, he came to BYU in 1962 as an assistant. Then he became the head coach in 1972, Mark. And at that point, he took a chance. You know, he, at that time, everybody was running the veer or the power eye offense or the option, that kind of stuff. And he took a chance and hired Dewey Warren, an old Tennessee quarterback, to put in a pass offense. And along with that, Doug Scoville, used to work with Randall Cunningham with the Eagles, was also involved in that. And, and you know, at that time, they said, well, everybody else is running the football. We have to throw it. So they developed a different system. Nowadays, you have the exact opposite. You have the service academies, and you have Rice and schools like that that don't have the talent and the personnel. What do they do? They run the they wishbone run the and the beer and the other Man. schools. And so it shows about the evolution of the game in college football over the last 20, 25 years. And I could, guess you could say that back in the day, Lavelle Edwards, a bit of a visionary. Third down and eight for Wyoming. The nose of the ball resting right over the five-yard line, their own five. Night has fallen here in the desert with 2.09 to play in the fourth quarter. Warwick out of his own end zone, incomplete intended for Saraf. So the Cowboys will have to punt out of the shadows of their own goalposts. And BYU will get possession with around two minutes to play. That would have been a huge conversion for the Cowboys. And Aaron Langley will have to punt this football. He would lead the nation in net punting, but he doesn't have enough punts to qualify. Let's hope he can catch this snap better than, than he did the extra point, which fell out of his hands, but wound up being a two-point conversion. A big punt, John, coming up for the sophomore, Aaron Langley. And there's James Dye waiting patiently for a return. You know what? Deer and elk hunting season must be over in Wyoming because there's a lot of Cowboy fans that have made the trip here and are starting to make some noise. Their voices intoning passionately right now with 2.05 to play. They want their punter, Aaron Langley, to get off a great one. Well, you know, that's part of the problem with Wyoming, too, and that is there's only 500,000 people in the, in the state. So, you know, when you're talking about a fan base for bowl games, this is why Wyoming's been overlooked. They just don't travel well. And as you said, if it's Labor Day weekend and they're camping or, you know, it's deer season, forget it. You know, you're not going to get people to go to the football game. There's, it's an active state. There's more things to do than sitting around watching football. That's, that's what Joe Tiller was trying to explain to me. Yeah. Wyoming, the football team anyway, hunting big game at BYU today. If they could pick off the number six team in the country, that would be huge. Now, you wonder about Tiller's mixed emotions. He told us that he's anxious to get to Purdue, anxious to get started, anxious to get recruiting. He told me that he can't use any of the Wyoming list. He's got to be real careful about who's on Wyoming's list and who's on Purdue's list. He's already spent a week out there and done some recruiting. He plans to go out this week as well. But, you know, you're talking about a guy who wants to get started, but he doesn't want to finish this <laughs> run either. A lot of his players feel good for him. Yeah, they do. They feel good that he's going to get an opportunity. Langley with an opportunity to get his crew out of a hole. A look from the end zone. I wonder if they're thinking safety here. They and are. John, you called it. Langley... Steps out of the back of the end zone, burns a little time in the process. With 1.56 to play, they give up the deuce. Well, now they're down three. 
They get a clear punt from the 20-yard line. Oh, I'm sorry, they're, they're up three in this game. A, a field goal would tie the game. Joe Tiller electing to take the safety, concede the safety. I, I, could, I could see the logic behind this. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. Before the half, you know, he didn't want to press his luck. And right here, he doesn't want to get a punt block. He doesn't want to give up seven points. They're punting, you know, with less than the 15 yards you normally have between the center and the punter. He feels his defense has played well enough. If they can free kick it now from the 20-yard line, BYU will start from beyond midfield. Before, they would have started on their side of the 50-yard line and have been in a much, much better position to win the football game. Yeah, you but now you give BYU a chance to tie it with a field goal and going to overtime. BYU, John, with one timeout remaining. Wyoming also with one timeout remaining. Well, you know, it didn't start out the way we thought it would, Mark. You know, these whack games, <laughs> it didn't start out the way we thought it would, but it's, it's sure winding up the way we thought it would. Hey, the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are David Seroff of Wyoming and Dustin Johnson of BYU. Your wife can make you another protein shake, Dustin. <laughs> Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. And let's One. hope she picks him up next time when he's waiting outside of practice. <laughs> 1.56 to play in the fourth quarter. Wyoming leads by three. And number 37, Ethan Pochman for BYU, has a career-long field goal of 51 yards. That means they would need to get to the 34-yard line to kick a 51-yarder. Langley is punting for the Cowboys from the 20. Just moments ago, he stepped out of the back of the end zone to take a safety. Well, we've seen some interesting calls at the end of games today. John Makovic on fourth and one from his own 30. Joe Tiller here taking the safety. And a fumble. Who's got it? BYU recovers at its own 40. And a collective sigh of relief coming from the Cougar sideline. Well, you, you know talk what? about close calls. Nate That's Foreman recovered it, John. Right, he did. I'm sorry, Mark. Aaron Langley did not punt the ball well at all. That ball only went 40 yards. It should go from your foot to about 60 yards. It almost worked out because you don't have somebody that's used to fielding kickoffs or punts catching the ball there, and it dropped on the ground. But Langley, this ball should be at the 30-yard line or 25. That's why Tiller decided to take the safety and do the free kick. Yeah, John, with no pressure on him, you'd think he would get off a better punt. Steve Sarkeesian has 154 to work with. That's a lot of time for him. Out of the backfield to Ronnie Jenkins. Jenkins hand walking across the 45 brought down to the 46 yard line the clock running with 147 to play in the fourth Jay Jenkins making the tackle BYU with one timeout remaining BYU has to pick up their pace a little bit offensively Mark Atuaya checks in they're making substitutions taking a lot of time calling this play yeah, second and five split back Sarkeesian's gonna pass under pressure gets it away complete to Keala Lulu and he's brought down at near the 41-yard line by Robbie Duncan, a 13-yard pickup. They'll stop the clock with 1.20 to play and move the sticks for the first down. The ball's at the 41. Remember, they'd have to get to the 34 for a 51-yard field goal by Ethan Pochman. That's his career long. Keep that in mind. Single back set this time. Three wideouts for the Cougars. Atuaya, the lone back. Sarkeesian underneath, incomplete for Kaipo McGuire. And it stops the clock with 1.13 to play. That's great coverage all the way across the field by Brian Brown. Really nice job. Brian Brown, number 13, he's a linebacker running with Kaipo McGuire all the way from the outside of the field across the middle. Keep in mind, Brown didn't play today or didn't start today because they wanted to stop the run. Now he's in an obvious passing situation. This Wyoming defense bends but does not break that often. Give up a lot of yards, but they do make big plays. Second down and 10 for the Cougars from the 41. Sarkeesian, lots of real estate ahead of him, still on his feet. Down to the 28-yard line, a first down with 104 to play. They stop the clock. 
Jenkins made the stop. 13 yards on the first down for Sarkeesian. Here's a guy who came in much more confident this year. He's a different quarterback. He learned the system. He learned the nuances that Lavelle Edwards had out there for him, and it's paid off. The number one quarterback in the nation in pass efficiency at work. 53 seconds to play. Has time. Nobody open. Completes it. Atuaya brought down to the 13-yard line. How about Atuaya? Everybody's expecting him to run out of bounds. He dips back inside and almost slips through into the end zone. 17 yards on the gain. Brown making the tackle. Hey, forget about field goal. They might be thinking touchdown right now, John. Yeah, they're going to go for the touchdown now. They're certainly in good enough position where the field goal is almost a given. Now they can take some chances and go into the end zone. But you got to be happy for Mark Atuaya. Here's a guy who's been replaced by Brian McKenzie, Ronnie Jenkins. He was a starter here as a running back, and he comes up with a very big play in this football game. Well, coming up next, folks, number four, Florida, battles Alabama in the Georgia Dome in the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. That's right here on ABC Sports next. There's Atuaya, number 22 in the huddle, John. No doubt playing with a bit of a heavy heart. He saw his best friend, Itula Mealy, go down with a knee injury early. Those two have been playing football together since they were in public school at the age of 11. They grew up playing Pop Warner football together. They're the closest of friends on and off the field. And no doubt he's thinking about his injured teammate and friend just a little bit. He's from Laia, Hawaii, town of what, 5,000 people in the North Shore of Oahu? Surf country. Yeah, that, not for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mealy, Mealy said, I'm not, I don't go on those waves. <laughs> But yeah, I think so. I think there's a part of Mealy probably playing inside of uh, Mark Atuaya to get today in this game. And, you know, there's a guy right there. Lavelle Edwards, I don't think, has uh, changed his expression in 25 years of coaching on the sideline. That's that's a picture of stoicism right there. So they remark in Provo about him. You know, he said Lavelle Edwards is real happy. He just hasn't told his face. That's all. <laughs> but he's a delightful man to be around. There's a smile in there somewhere fighting to get out. 38 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. BYU trailing by a field goal. First and 10. An Alliance Bowl berth on the line for Sarkeesian. He wants to pass. Has a man. Atuaya. Brought down at the eight-yard line. Boy, that was a pick play. Keiko McGuire came inside. The ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Clock running with 22 seconds to play. BYU has one timeout remaining. Wyoming doesn't have any. Split backs. Sarkeesian almost sacked. Atuaya makes the catch, and he's down at the three-yard line. We've got to call timeout. One second to go. Oh, ho, ho. Ho, did they wait? Yeah, Sarkeesian spent a lot of time running around. Then they forgot about the clock, and Atuaya could have scored a touchdown, too. I think they were worried about that. Okay, it's decision time for Lavelle Edwards. Right there, there's a touchdown of Atuaya. He can catch that thing, but he goes down on the ground. Did he catch it? He caught it with one hand, so it keeps the clock going. Caught it while on the ground. And Kaipo McGuire, number 80, is the only alert Cougar to get that timeout registered. Otherwise, that would have been an awful situation for BYU. Wow, almost failing to be There's Roger French the in the middle of the screen there next to Norm Chow. <laughs> Man, these guys, well, they, now they make it two seconds on the clock, so that's when the timeout was actually called. Pochman in for the field goal attempt. This would tie the game up. The attempt coming from 20 yards out. He's missed one today. He's made two, one from 30, one from 46, and this one is right through the pipes. We're tied, and we will go into overtime. It's 25 apiece. Somehow, some way, you just knew <laughs> it was going to wind up like this. 
much to the chagrin and dismay of Joe Tiller. Hotchman. They get the hole down and the snap down. Maybe the most important 20 yarder he's ever made. You can't leave now. The game's just begun. 25 all. Overtime coming up. The Wyoming Cowboys and the BYU Cougars tied at 25 apiece. After 60 minutes of play, we are going into overtime. There's a look at the quarterback for the Cowboys, Josh Walworth. As we get set now for the coin toss, each team gets one possession at least in overtime. BYU will start off on defense. The Cowboys on offense. We'll be right back for overtime in a minute. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola, Dean Blevins. A look at the overtime rules. It's not sudden death. Each team gets at least one possession. Wyoming will start with the ball on the 25-yard line right now. If the score is tied after the first overtime, the process will be repeated until that tie is broken. Now, the Cowboys, John, have been in this position before. They played an overtime game against Iowa State earlier this year, and Corey Weedle did a good job in that game, winning it for them. Walwick sacked at the 30. Henry Bloomfield, who plays the game at 100 miles per hour, says, raise the roof. A huge sack for the Cougar defense. Boy, that starts to affect the strategy of Wyoming when you have a sack and you get backed up. Bloomfield, number 91, working one-on-one -on -one with 51. Right there, Jeff Smith just beats him with a head fake inside and comes outside and makes the sack. So now it's second and 15. Now... The Cougar, or I'm sorry, the Cowboys can make the first down. This, the game is played in overtime like a normal game. You can make first downs, but certainly they want to try and get a first down or at least get in better field goal position now. Got to get to the 15, second and 15. The quick slant almost picked off. Number 30, Ben Cook, who's played a fine game tonight. Almost had the pick, but he slipped on the carpet. It'll be third down and 15 for Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming's in trouble here now because they have to kick something like a 46-yard field goal, 47-yard field goal to get some points if they don't make any yards here. And they have to decide just what they want to do. If they want to try and get a first down or just get some yardage here to get in better field goal position. Right now, John, they have the ball in the middle of the field at the 30. Walwork to the sideline. Incomplete of the 23. Darren Oncourt couldn't hang on. And in comes the Cowboy field goal unit. They tried. Bronx Duran and Court on right side here. They weren't going for the first down. They were just trying to get in better field goal position, but he could not hold on to the football. So this sets up a long field goal situation for the Cowboys. Corey Weedle from 47 yards out. He's made one from 20, missed one from 45. He's already won a game for them this year in overtime. And he pushes it to the left. No good. BYU now will be on offense. If they score, they win it. It's that simple. They get the ball on the 25-yard line now on offense. And that's what you want to do when you win that coin toss in overtime. You want to be on defense first because then you have to figure out what it is you have to match. With this missed field goal right here, BYU simply needs third three points now to win this football game. The first team all-wax selection missing by that much. BYU, if they score and subsequently win this game, they could get an at-large Alliance Bowl bid. Now look at the possibilities there. 
Wyoming, if they lose this game, could be shut out of the bull picture altogether. Johnson and McKenzie in the offset eye for the Cougars. First and 10 from the 25. It's McKenzie over the left side of the line, running off tackle, gaining five yards, running over John Tate down to the 20. Pat Larson, number 92, making the tackle for the Cowboys. It'll be second down and five to go. And it's not a hurry-up situation for BYU. Joe Tiller's got to be rethinking that whole strategy now, taking the safety, allowing his team now. They were up five. At that point, they were up three. Then they punted the free kick after the safety. BYU came down, tied it up. And now Wyoming gets shut out so far in the first period of overtime, and BYU is in a position to win this game. Sarkeesian hands it off to McKenzie. Bouncing it outside. McKenzie about two yards short of the first down at the 17. Levingston making the tackle on the corner, providing good support. Don't forget, coming up next, the SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. Alabama number 15 against number 4 Florida with a chance to get back to the Sugar Bowl, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, for the National Championship, maybe against Florida State. Third down and one to go for BYU. A look at the number one passer in the nation in pass efficiency, Steve Sarkeesian. Yeah, but I bet they run left here. McKenzie. Close to the first down. Stopped right at the marker near the 15. The thinking there, Mark, with the ball in the right hash, is just either get the first down or get the ball more in the middle of the field for their field goal kicker. Ethan Pochman, and Pochman stepping on the field now to win this football game. In comes the field goal unit. <laughs> Looks to me like Joe Tiller wants a timeout. You each get one timeout per overtime period. You can't carry the timeouts into the next overtime period, but Tiller wants to put some pressure on Pochman right now. Pochman, three of four on the day. Otherwise, focused on that man, place kicker Ethan Pochman for the win. He's three of four on the day. He's made one from 30, 46, and 20 yards out. He's missed one from 43. This attempt coming from 32 yards out. Out of the hold of Alan Boardman. It's over. The Cougars win it. Lavelle Edwards has his 18th WAC title. What a finish for Dean Blevins and John Spagnola. I'm Mark Jones. The SEC Championship is next.